Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Spodcast. As always, I'm your host, Sumeto Media, joined by my co-host, Alex. Hey, guys. New videos weekly. <laughs> oh, it's been three months. It's been yeah. three months. Yeah, part it's of your that, fault this time. I'll admit, part of that is my fault. And part of that's, like, my fault, but, like, slightly different. They're both my fault. But varying levels. We have okay, so we, we, we got some house oh, we got some we got some housekeeping to do, right? So fucking um the reason that we haven't had an episode of the Spodcast in so long is we, we have our natural gap between Spodcasts where we do an episode and then our time frame slash my energy just doesn't sync up well enough. We gotta to, wait for topics to uh, to uh, appear. I mean, I I feel like the purpose of the podcast is th- at least in theory, for us to be able to get on and just talk about whatever. And it's just sort of this, you know, chill, relaxing two hours of conversation that you can throw on while you're doing something. That's I continually feel like it's too low effort and I'm above that sort of content. And yet that's all I've been watching on YouTube and listening to while at work for like the last several months. I don't know why I don't understand the inherent value of just long form conversational content. It's honestly toxic. Yeah. But the reason that we haven't done an episode in so long is uh if you guys remember from a while ago, because this has been a few months now, I was out of commission for an entire month. Was moving into this place, didn't have my computer set up and what have you. And I just didn't want to do I guess this is a conversation to get into. I didn't want to do a Spodcast right away because Spodcasts don't typically do as well as like the main channel videos that I do on my on my YouTube channel. So when I upload like meme related topics and deep dives into like internet culture or or memes in a certain genre, they'll do a certain number of views. But podcasts don't typically get as many views naturally because they're they're more of a secondary, you know, community based thing, not really the thing you search out and yeah. go watch on somebody's channel, right? Which is totally also normal. I just also I just like deter viewers. I don't think that's true. People like you, Alex, although they don't know what you look like, which is becoming more and more of a meme. I, I kind of enjoy the meme. There's nothing. There's no reason why they sh- they can't know what I look like, but at this point, it's like it's, kind of. It's funny. just not something we've done yet. It was never our intention to keep you a secret, and yet but here we are. It's been a, a pleasant side side effect. Yeah. So we have that. Um, so anyway, I went on a bit of a self-discovery with the content that I uploaded to my channel over the last few weeks, Alex. I don't know if you've been following this with the stuff that I throw up on Twitter and poorly communicate through cryptic messages elsewhere on social media. But it sort of ties back to the... the I don't upload podcasts super frequently because I don't feel like they're entertaining enough for you know the viewers at home. I feel like you know I've got this highly polished, more energy put into videos that I try and do every week and it's like you know if I can't think of one of those if I don't do one of those I never want to upload two spodcasts back to back because then it's like oh look how lazy I was these last 14 (laughs) days you know what I mean like I wasn't able to come up with anything interesting so we're just throwing up two episodes of you and me talking about anime and video games again you know what I mean and I thought that was bad but over the course of time like I said just these last few weeks I've done a couple different videos. So let me give you a quick timeline here. Once I got into this new apartment, I had uploaded this video, which is, is OnlyFans Ruining Memes, where I wanted to do a deep dive into the terrible memes that I see on Twitter. I think of, I watched you doing that on, on Twitch. Did you, were you doing that on Twitch? I was, yeah, I was live editing some of this on Twitch, yeah. yeah and basically, yeah, basically I wanted to take a look at some of the really low quality memes that OnlyFans models were making with no intention of doing anything other than taking advantage of an existing joke or meme format to show off their ass and titties and remind you that they have an OnlyFans link in their bio that you can subscribe to for 15 bucks a month or whatever, right? So the memes themselves are inherently poor, right? They're not great quality. Sometimes they're sort of funny, but it's mostly, you know, nobody my ass and then a picture of their ass and it's like by the way link in bio and it's like this isn't this isn't very high effort 
I want more you, effort in my memes. I need higher quality memes. Even if I happen to be jerking off, like it's, you know, a man has standards. You know what I mean, Alex? Yeah. So I did that video. It ended up being 20 minutes long. It came off a little bit misogynistic. I did have an entire 90 second rap um, about uh, women not being funny, but you know, to each its own. I then did an episode called Why Does the Internet Hate British People? I wonder British where people? people got that. I wonder <laughs> where people got the idea. Exactly, exactly. I then did a video called Why Does the Internet Hate British People? Both of these were about a month ago at this point. I was trying to get back into the rhythm of uploading every week. Because prior to that, I hadn't uploaded in, I think, six weeks. It had, been, it had been the longest time that I hadn't uploaded since, you know, VidCon 2019, where I was gone for two weeks and then came back and my apartment flooded and I needed to rebuild my computer where I was also offline for about six weeks back then. So I upload, I upload, why does the internet hate British people, right? Yeah. Which is a hilarious meme. I see it on Twitter all the time. Sometimes it makes, sorry? Because of colonialism. Yeah, exactly. I mean, sometimes it's hilarious just because British people are ridiculous. You know what I mean? Like you've got this country that takes over 80% of the fucking world just three, 400 years ago. Right, owned yeah. that much of the world, and now the, you can't have anything sharper than a butter knife without getting fined for not having a license for it. You know what I mean? It's hilarious to me, as well as the rest of the internet. So yeah, well, you know, it's like you reach they reach their peak, and now it's just you know, you can only go. What down. happens happens. Yeah, what were they going to do? Colonize Mars? Right? Like it was, it was only going to go downhill from there. I mean, they could try. There's, I mean, not powered on T. It'd not, be nice to show some effort. England, right? Um, like, like it's like they don't even try anymore. How do you figure? Like, it's cold well, up there, dude. It's cold. They invented it's damp soccer, and it's rainy. but now they suck at it. Is that they true? They invented tennis, and now they suck at it. <laughs> Why are they not good at anything that they make? That's interesting. They didn't. I, th- I think like there's like many origins of soccer, but like the standard rule set of today, I think, came from them. I would believe that because like you'll have like soccer teams there that are like like a hundred plus years old yeah that's true they take their soccer super seriously to a fault i would say because it's a stupid sport any sport that isn't played on a computer is pretty stupid but especially soccer yeah i'm a pretty big arsenal fan (laughs) exactly um so we did that did his OnlyFans ruining memes? I did. Why does the internet hate British people? After wait, 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 wait. The answer to that question is no. It's not. People are ruining memes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, only I. I feel like I don't even know what the fuck my consensus was for is OnlyFans ruining memes. The OnlyFans has a very hilarious sort of subgenre of memes that are overly sexual and almost satirical in a way that's like haha who cares i'm just a stupid dumb bimbo who's selling her body online like pseudo ironically but it's like them making fun of themselves so it's like kind of funny in sort of a dark humor sort of way which of course i appreciate being a millennial but it's just you know it's still fun like it's like a firefighter making jokes about like burning alive and it's like dude that's dark but you're a firefighter so i guess it's okay you know what i mean yeah so it's like stuff like that Internet hating British people did an episode on VTubers. So I did all these videos. I could have, we could have easily recorded a podcast. It's not like you were any busier than you normally are. We could totally find a time to sit down. Well, I, I, I would say I am. Yeah. I just didn't feel like doing a podcast as like a video after I hadn't uploaded in six weeks. It's like, I feel like I have to come back with something strong. You have to find your rhythm. I got to come back with something strong and polished, you know, understand that in this six months or in this six weeks, I had a video just before I went offline for a month uh, titled Ben Shapiro's Rise and Fall in the Meme Culture, which is now at 160,000 views, which is a lot of views for my channel. I think it's a lot of views. It's the third most viewed video on my channel at the moment. That's a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. So from that, I had like an extra 10,000 subscribers or something crazy. Between that and I had a video go live, a collaboration video go live on Internet Historian's channel, both of those in that six weeks. Right. So my channel went from, I think I was at 38, 39,000 subscribers to over 50,000 subscribers without having uploaded a video in six weeks. So like the video that I came back with, the videos that I would be coming back with needed to really set a precedent for not only like what I'm capable of, but also like this is the sort of stuff that I make. 
So I was like, coming in with a podcast might be a bad idea. So I was like, you know, let me do actual videos. Let me do something that's a little bit more refined, has a tiny bit more research, has appears to have a bit more effort to it. And maybe that will bode well with this new audience that has come to watch me because, you know, you know th th that was my thought process. So I was like, yeah. let me do this OnlyFans video. And then the next week I did the Internet Hates British People. And then the week after that, I did a video completely on VTubers. Those all did perfectly normal numbers. They did fine. Um, the week after that, I was like, okay, there aren't any funny memes. There really weren't any funny memes even when I did the British People video. But I was like, whatever, I've got this idea for these uh, you know, why the internet hates British people. VTubers are becoming a big thing. Let me do these two videos. And then I started running out of steam. And I was like, yeah. between the internet not being super funny because the coronavirus has gone on for so long, like nobody just has the creative energy anymore, I imagine. You know what, you know what went away because people just lost track of time? What? Remember, like, it was, this was like for the last two years before this year. And then it started the first three months of this year. It was like how there'd be like the monthly meme. Where like they'd have like the meme calendar for each year of like what memes were big each month. Oh, on but like R slash dank memes? Yeah, or they'd have like they'd have like I can see if I could find one while I'm talking, but like But the meme have, of like, the month, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. And like I feel like once quarantine started, everything accelerated and then just died out. Cause that, cause oh, like, hell yeah. Yeah. I mean I pretty rarely do videos like on a topic typically my videos will just be this is what happened in meme culture this week and the first week that i was like oh there aren't a lot of memes for me to go over i started doing this series called meme critique which you can see a couple episodes here which yeah. is my way of taking a look at memes that might not necessarily be popular this week but they have a history i can explore the history i do this thing where i give them a bit of a score see how you know how much longevity they have how funny they are despite how long they've been on the internet um and it's my way of doing content when there isn't something super funny happening this week. There isn't anything worth talking about this week. Yeah. And then I did a video on Ben Shapiro for the same reason. I was like, nothing funny is happening this week. Then OnlyFans, then the internet hating British people. I sort of found a way to do a video with the VTubers thing. It wasn't exactly a meme, but it was getting popular and they're goofy enough characters that I was like, I can get some comedy out of this. But then by month two, month three, I was like, bro, I am running out of ideas. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I decided to do a 50K question and answer video, which is not something I ever really thought that I would do. I always find them just sort of a waste of time. But I was like, you know, I could tell the story about how I met Internet Historian, give a little bit of advice on how I started out, answer some questions that people have for me. I don't have anything better to do this week, so this seems like a good time to do it. I did hit 50,000 subs, which is a lot of subs. So, I mean, I could say that it's warranted, right? We've been working for this for a while. Yeah. Um. The week after that is when things really started to get interesting. Because the week after that, I was like, okay, what is this? Week 9? Week 10? There was, like, I, there was maybe one meme, two memes that were sort of funny over the course of the last couple weeks. That if I really wanted to, I could double-handed milk a 10-minute video out of. But it just didn't feel like it'd be entertaining. Yeah. So, so I was like, okay, I did a thing on my second channel where I went over like the last six or seven animes that I'd watched over the, over the, um, the month that I was out of commission. I watched through quite a few animes and a little bit before that I watched through quite a few animes. So on my second channel, I just did this thing where I recorded my screen. I pulled up these animes that I watched and I just sort of talked about them. I was like, this is what it is. This is the premise. This is what I thought was interesting or not interesting about it. And... I don't know if it did super well because I don't have a good comparison for numbers on my second channel, but it was a lot of fun to make to just yeah. sit down and just talk about animes and remember how funny some of them were and remember how stupid some of them were. And then after I uploaded it, I saw the comments of people who were like, oh, I also really enjoyed this anime or I also thought this anime was overrated. And I was like, oh, yeah, I forget these things have like tens of thousands of people who enjoy these shows that can like relate to what I thought. Like, it's not like a unique experience that I had that I thought this thing was good. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're not special. Yeah. It's like when you, when you find a show and you really enjoy it and then you like discover the subreddit and they're making all these jokes that you now get because you watch the show. You know what I mean? Yeah. When did you first discover like r slash free folk, for instance, for those at home who don't know, that's sort of the meme subreddit for Game of Thrones, me and Alex. It's, it's, it's bigger than the actual subreddit. It's bigger than, uh, yeah, it's bigger than the actual subreddit now. 
Well, uh, with the, with the finale, it. who can blame it? Yeah, but it was bigger before that too. It actually had better discussions before it. Uh, it did have discussions before memes took over. Um, I would say I found it season seven. Yeah, but so, I also didn't start watching till season five was on TV and I had to catch up. So I discovered the subreddit first. I didn't recognize what it was, but I thought the memes were hilarious. So I subscribed to it. So it was always on my home feed. And then I finally decided to figure out why my girlfriend was ignoring me for a couple hours every Sunday afternoon. And I it was wasn't like, your personality. Well, no, that's, that's Tuesdays. Oh. But on Sundays she'd be like, all right, I'm watching game of Thrones. I'd be like, cool. I wasn't, I was just going to play video games and ignore you anyway. And then I was like, I should maybe start watching Game of Thrones. Because at this point, season was season nine's the last one? Eight's the last one? Eight. Eight. So season seven had the last like four or five episodes airing. So I had like a month to catch up on Game of Thrones. So I was like, cool, easy. End up watching through season one through most of seven in, you know, four weeks flat, something like that. That's so I, really that's a lot. I don't think like a lot of lot. Yeah. I mean it's it's honestly too fast because if you don't really grow to appreciate hating John in the beginning and then missing him when he dies and then, you know, it's it's the the distance between for people who are watching it on TV, right? John dies in a season finale and then gets brought back to life in a season opener. So and there's you don't this, even know if he's coming back. There's this year of you thinking, oh my God, Jon Snow got killed. Everybody sort of started figuring that he might be more important of a character than people lead on. And then here he goes and dies in the show that is not shy about killing main characters. And then a year later, you're like, oh my God, he gets brought back to life. So oh, it looks like permanent death isn't always the, the way this story is going to go. He's back. But for me, it was 10 minutes. Yeah, you know, because because it's already I'm more, so like that that was completely lost on me. I never experienced that. I knew what the red wedding was, but I didn't actually know it was coming when I watched when I was binge watching. Cause I like, yeah, I thought it was way further into the show, and I, yeah, we're watching so fast because it's maybe like maybe like two or three weeks into me binging because we weren't binging it that hardcore, but we were binging it, and I just remember being like, "What the fuck is this?" I didn't think everybody died. I was like, Rob's the head of the army. So like maybe the mom dies and like his wife dies and that's why, or his girlfriend dies. And that's why they like brought her into the story. No, they were married at that point. Were they? Yeah. Oh shit. Okay. That well, was the whole I was basis like, maybe, for the red wedding. Because yeah. I was like, maybe they die. Cause they've already killed off Ned. Who the fuck else is going to continue on with the army? And it's like, nope, you're all fucking dead, and we're leaving it up to fucking Sansa and Arya. Good fucking luck, girls. And it's like, god damn, dude. Like, it really fucking drops your expectations of the fucking Starks making anything of themselves. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I was like, this isn't even like a final boss. This is an old dude who runs the fucking bridge. Like, you've, yeah. st you've still got Cersei to deal with. Not they even were really Cersei. Run, they fucking... were really run down at that point. Like, it was a stark contrast from the start of the show. Was that supposed to be a pun, or are you being serious? Both. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I should laugh or if I was like, yeah, valid thing, Alex. No, both. For sure, both. Yeah. Anyway, so I, I decided... It sad, because I have to think about how far that show fell off. That that show infuriates me, dude. We, we could do an entire episode on how much Game of Thrones infuriates me. There's just so much... There's so much to enjoy about it, but there's just so much... I mean, I guess you could just enjoy it. Who cares if I, it didn't end great? Just enjoy, enjoy how much everybody six enjoyed. Six seasons out of eight. Yeah, that's not bad. That's a that's a that's a eighty. Uh, why why would I try to do math on on the podcast? No, keep, that was keep stupid. Going, keep going, keep going. You got it. At least thirty percent. At least thirty percent good. You're not wrong. I I could be writer. So anyway, yeah. I I had this little bit of a backstory where I watched Attack on Titan, sort of fell in love with the drama and uh, intense tones of that anime, showed it to my, she wasn't my girlfriend at the time, but we started dating like a couple weeks later, and then she binged through all of Attack on Titan. My girlfriend watches a lot of anime, for anybody who doesn't know. Like, I would, she's not super good about knowing the names of the show. She'll really just throw on anything that's like new and she hasn't seen before and just watch through the story and like 
you know, like she, she doesn't look up the characters and see what people think of the story online. She doesn't do any of that. She watches it and then moves on to whatever the next show is. She's that kind of person. I don't know if anybody else yeah. is like that, but that that's, that's how she does stuff. Um, and so I, I found attack on Titan and then I discovered the subreddit that had all the memes for attack on Titan. And I was like, Oh my God, these are kind of fucking hilarious. And I realized slowly over time that a lot of the memes that I just thought were whatever memes, characters from, I never really put any thought into it, were in fact from full-fledged anime shows. These little snippets, these little things that these people said that made me laugh every time I saw them on a Twitter thread or wherever, were coming from shows that had this sort of humor all throughout the fucking storyline for three, four seasons sometimes. Yeah. So I was like, I gotta start watching anime, <laughs> right? Um, I gotta get into this. I gotta get into this, yeah. So I decided to make a video. We're going back to the fact that there aren't any memes for me to do videos on. And my channel up to this point has mostly been about me talking about memes and what I think is funny about internet culture. So I was like, fuck it. I'll just do a video talking about what animes I've watched, what I like, what I don't. Maybe that'll be interesting. And that video did, at this point, just as well as my meme content. And this is when it started to open my eyes a little bit that it was like, yo, maybe I don't need to just like find whatever popular Pepe is getting passed around Reddit. And I can instead just do videos based on like whatever I happen to think is entertaining. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of like memes, like subcategories, well, literally subreddits, but like, you know, little pockets of communities that make really devoted memes to whatever they're, they're interested in. Those are the best. Because it, like at its core, like a meme is an inside joke, right? It's not just yeah. that it's humorous, but it's also the sort of satisfaction and elitism that you get for understanding the reference. Sometimes even just the way that you're supposed to read the meme is satisfying yeah. in its own right. It's like, oh, yeah, I get this. I understand this joke. I'm sure some people don't. So to add layers to that, for it to also be like, well, not only do you have to spend enough time on the internet to get that this is a meme and that this image is a reflection of this text atop it, but you also have to have seen Game of Thrones and remember the specific character's name because they're making a pun about it, is like, it might it might not even be fucking entertaining for real, for real, but it's still satisfying to be like, oh, I get that. Yeah, I've seen Game of Thrones. That's kind of funny. Yeah. I like, I mean, I just feel like subreddits will usually, or for shows, they'll usually have like a, a serious subreddit and then the meme subreddit and the meme subreddit is always so much more work is put into it. It looks like, and more like actual discussion takes place in the comments. Yeah. But like in the actual subreddit, it's just walls of text that you just don't want to read. That's how it was for game of Thrones. Game of Thrones is a perfect example for that. R slash free folks started because, um, they didn't want anybody discussing spoilers for season eight because they were starting to leak images and things of that nature. And <clears throat> they were banning people making comparisons to the book or speculating on what could happen in season eight or talking about. So they needed a place to talk about fucking, you know, unofficial release stuff because they had, you know, like a full episode was released like a week early on like Thai, Thai Indonesian TV, Thai TV, Filipino TV or what have you. Yeah. Um, for season eight. So and the main subreddit banned memes, which is obviously also Stupid. a part of it. They didn't allow any memes. So Free Folk became a thing. Game of Thrones memes became a thing. And yeah, that eventually became the main source of discourse for these shows. Because it's like, if you're going to limit what people can talk about, or like the shitty thing about r slash Game of Thrones or r slash a, a story of song, of... song of Ice and Fire. Is like, you would also have discussions from the book. And it's like, can you guys just not... Like not remind me that I don't fucking read. Well, it was supposed you know to be what I mean? of, the ga uh, Game of Thrones. This that separate Game of Thrones was supposed to be just for the show, and Song of Ice and Fire was both, but more book related. I think is how it was supposed to be. But is how I would no imagine. One, is no one follows the rules, but the only rule they have to follow is no memes. That's infuriating. I don't know why people would do it that way. I mean, Free Folk is magical. I wouldn't trade it for the world. I do. I do love memes from I, the reason i started watching game of thrones is because i saw so many memes about it i would see memes that i don't understand and they'd be on the front page of reddit and i showed them to my girlfriend and she'd be like oh yeah that's a game of thrones thing like i, I just like, well, like open my phone to game to like reddit and just see somebody saying fuck ollie and i have no idea who ollie is i hate that i well i don't <laughs> I hate it no 
it's led me to watch so many tremendous shows that I've thoroughly enjoyed because I know I'm going to enjoy the memes afterwards. Even if the show's not great, I'm going to be happy that I can be part of the in circle of people who are making these jokes, right? There's like a, there's always like a barrier to memes where you have to overcome the knowledge gap for the inside joke. Yeah. It's like showing someone Reddit the first time and they just don't get it because it's like you have to be like a level 10 meme like but they're only at like level three of the inside joke and like they have to understand that this is ironic to the ironic part of the joke yeah yeah yeah, yeah. if you if you bump into a if you bump into a tier two meme before you're ready like you, you're just gonna get one shot dude you know you don't have the you don't have the right intelligence stats to be able to take down something like that you know what i mean yeah i was just i was like kind of looking through my subreddits and i'm i'm subscribed to more meme subreddits about topics than i am the actual like topics Oh, like, I don't even do fucking. I don't. The so only like, time. I'm, I'm, go finish. on. All right, I'll finish. Um, <laughs> so like, I'm not subscribed to anything Marvel related, but I'm subscribed to Thanos did nothing wrong. I'm oh not yeah, I'm in there too. I'm not subscribed to anything Star Wars except for prequel and sequel memes. Right. And then I'm subscribed to Naruto, obviously, but I'm also subscribed hmm. to D- to Dank Ruto. I didn't even know that was a... Uh, I guess I wouldn't get it. Dank Ruto would just confuse me. On Reddit, I have a lot of just really frustrating memes that I feel like would be tough to really grasp. So I'm subscribed to r slash coaxed into a snafu. Do you know what that one is? Not at all. <laughs> it's sub. It's ironic MS Paint memes making fun of the way that other subreddits post their memes if that makes I'm a, sense I'm gonna need to get that here one. let me let me throw this up on my thing let's take a look at the top posts of this year let me see if I can find can we also before we get into this deeper can we also talk about how the best thing ever is to go to a new subreddit and just sort by all time oh and yeah just get the, and the just me- get the full rundown the meme for that is the fucking Rick and Morty uh space moon guys that are like show me what you got oh yeah 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 here Twitter comedy Haha, <laughs> why is there object in place it's not supposed to be? Object in place. Fuck off. Like, <laughs> how many times have you seen this? Right? A lot. A lot. And it's just such a perfect execution. Flair, US politics, domestic, r slash world politics, the world, the politics. <laughs> like <laughs> oof. Every single comment. Police officer of Reddit, what do you think about the current situation? Not a police officer, but not actually a police officer, but I must say I'm not actually a police officer. While I'm not actually a police officer. <laughs> Like that kills me. By it's the way. so solid. The absolute peak of comedy: starving n-word, gay money. <laughs> this is the political compasses meme, which I, I don't think... get because I don't get politics. But like, you get what I mean? Like this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What level subreddit. of memeage do you have to be at to even understand this fucking subreddit? Six, maybe seven. Like this, is, you have to not only be on Reddit, but you have to be on Reddit for long enough that you get sick of this sort of stuff. And then you recognize that it's a trope that's now being made fun of in these fucking elaborate fucking memes. This is the subreddit you think you're getting when you go to r slash circle jerk, but it's r slash circle jerk is nothing as good as this. Yeah, no, this is, this is the people who got sick of r slash circle jerk not being good enough. What movie would be weirdest if it included a sex scene? Family movie. Ha ha ha. No, no, not that. <laughs> fucking dumb, dude. Uh, that the way that the only way that could be better is if he also wrote in edit thanks for the gold they do that all the time that's more of an r slash circle jerk thing but yeah uh, yeah i just i don't know i have I a few never... i have i have a good number of subreddits that are like that i've got that i've got bone hurting jews doge Bo- lore uh insider meme trading memes of the dank <laughs> to me for irl like stupid fucking subreddits dude but it's like, I, I know I'm amongst into, my kind. You gotta get into history memes. You gotta get into history memes. I don't understand them. I don't want to learn. Go to it. I'll explain them to you. Let's, it's let's... not worth it, man. Like It is. I'm sure I, I understand some of them, but anytime I open a meme and it's just those fucking Poland balls, I fucking leave, dude. That's not what Arsha's history memes is. It's not, but, but, but even but... that shit's like, I don't I need, I don't fuck whatever country this is. This is too much thinking for me. I don't know. I just like history content. I think we did the this podcast where we talked about like what YouTube we watch and like 
two of my five or three of my five were educational history based channels. Yeah, fucking Kurtzgagat and fucking the other ones. Kurtzgagat does nihilistic. Oh, that's uh, right. They don't do videos. history. No, I think mine was like overly sim or overly sarcastic, oversimplified, and then. I don't know what else I did. Why do you like history so much? Is it just were you all were you always sort of a history buff and you just appreciate the humor in it, or is it you weren't really a history buff and you I, uh, like the feeling of learning while laughing? I always liked history in school, but I never actually wanted to like pursue it because that would just be a lot of reading and writing. I just liked enjoying it for what it was and not having to like read a textbook. But like I'd gladly watch a video or a documentary explaining stuff or like talking about it i watch a lot of documentaries i really like documentaries you know what documentary i really like that like encapsulates history in that like but stuff that is like more recent is like i think cnn did it with tom hanks did a documentary on each decade starting from like the 60s going up to the 2010s Nah, i haven't seen that but like one episode it'll be like an eight-part series and like one episode will be on like tv shows one will be like the music of the decade will be like pop like movies of the decade and like it's like really like they break it down by pop culture that yeah kind it's a of good, sounds it's a, good, it's a good documentary series i like watching it like i've i learned stuff that i didn't know about that happened in like my lifetime that i just wasn't like cognitive of like do you know what waco texas was yeah when like i didn't even know that was a thing till like last year I know that's a thing because a dude at my work has brought it up like nine times. Yeah, has he? Like nine different times, yeah. Like, for reference, I'm an electrical engineer at my day job, which I won't be for too much longer. We'll get back to that conversation. But oh yeah, this dude at my job, I don't even... I mean, what could we have possibly been doing to have brought up that conversation? I don't know. I think we just randomly started talking about, like, Black Lives Matter or something. We were like, yeah, man, police certainly aren't perfect. And he was like, you want to talk about police not being perfect? Let me talk to you about Waco, Texas. Motherfuckers just pulled up on these peaceful dudes saying that they were a cult. And, like, bro, it was so stupid. This was literally, what, four months ago. And I rec- I recognize the name because it was like ah oh, he's talking about Waco again isn't he like, <laughs> like it's happening what what could we have been doing I'm like stripping wires to fucking crimp terminals onto a controller box and he's like yeah man Waco Texas dude <laughs> like, <laughs> no conversation about Waco Texas ever ends super well unless some unless everyone's in on making fun of it as like the the stupidest conspiracy theory yeah well stupidest probably got taken recent f among recent events but you know it's up there. I mean, to make sure that we're talking about the same thing, Waco, Texas is when they had like a deserted community of people that lived in this neighborhood that all sort of decided to arm themselves. And yeah, Texas decided, hey, we're not okay with that because you guys are all super close and you have a lot of guns. And they're like, what? It's legal for us to have guns and we're not a cult. And they I, think were like, they had, I think they had other stuff there too, if I remember. I don't remember what they did to set off the events, but then they just decided to burn themselves. Burn themselves or police executed a military raid on the compound and killed a bunch of people and they, claimed they, that it was because they had guns? They, I think the official, and I don't want to get into it because of the conspiracy, but like they lit themselves on, they lit the building on fire when police were storming in is what the official report says. Oh, interesting. So, oh, like, so if you watch, if you watch it on that TV, it's, it's a police tank going up to the house and then it starts catching on fire. So the whole so the whole reason that that's such a point of contention, the reason that it comes up in conversation so frequently is because nobody really knows, or nobody's well, 100% confident. Well, if you watch the footage, that, it looks like the Texas like state troopers just burn these people alive. Right. And that might be like the headline thing that people know about Waco. It was broadcast live. So ah. like that's, it was a big event. Interesting. I wonder why, did, when was that? 94. Four? What? That's not while we were alive, Alex. What the fuck? I'm supposed to hear about that when I was zero? I mean, yeah, but like you know, it was like a big. Technically, event we were alive. But I'm saying it was like a big event to people who like. It was could like as big... think and weren't shitting themselves at that age. Yeah, yeah but you sure. think that was something someone would have brought up in my life? Yeah, maybe. Ninety. It was ninety-three. Yeah, I mean that th- I was born in ninety-four. You're my age, right? So what? Yeah. That wasn't even in our lifetime. It wasn't, but like, you know, it was like, 
I know about other things that were in my general, you know, lifetime. Yeah, I remember them changing the fucking voice actor for Pets 2. Come on, man. So yeah, sick of these that up. It annoyed me. I put on Pets 2, and I was like, I enjoyed The Secret Life of Pets. Let's watch The Secret Life of Pets 2. And then the main dog starts talking. I'm like, they fucking got rid of Louie? And then I just turned it off. I was like, I don't want to watch this anymore. That is not, (laughs) Max's voice is not correct. I mean, it was probably the right decision. Louie's a bit of a creep, but come on. They switched to Patton Oswalt? Patton Oswalt's great. But the fucking magic of it you, was Louis C.K. I don't need C. you K. talking shit on Patton. I'm not talking shit on Patton. I'm saying the funniest fucking thing about The Secret Life of Pets is 40-something-year-old sick of being a divorced dad Louis C.K. voicing this optimistic-ass puppy as he explores the world outside of his apartment. That's what was so fucking hilarious about it. The fucking yeah. innocence of Max's voice being brought out by Louis C.K. It's not like Patton Oswalt isn't also you know, got some dark times in his past. That's funny to see him do this character. But like, ah, you jerk off once while on a phone call with somebody and suddenly Hollywood just starts swapping you out for Patton Oswalt. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, uh, um, I wouldn't recommend doing what Louie did. <laughs> I wouldn't either. There, there are definitely better decisions you could make in your career. Yeah. Also, Patton was on an episode of Best of the Worst with Red Letter Media. So I think him. I saw that. I have watched a few episodes of Red Letter Media, one on the best of the worst where they're talking about um, the the most popular of the Neil Bream films. I was like, let me give this a go because between Alex telling me that he appreciates both the YouTube channel and this movie and your movie sucks, Adam, personally telling me to watch Fateful Findings, I was like, let me watch Red Letter Media's video on it. Yeah, and it's a lot easier to digest than watching a Neil Breen movie sober. I don't know if that's true. I feel like there isn't so, a ton to appreciate. I feel like it's hard to watch something like Best of the Worst if you haven't already seen the movie or know what the movie's about. Like, you, if you had you, no idea what was going on, you it. it's a little Rich, confusing, watching isn't Watching Rich Evans explain Double Down is a lot more palatable than watching Double Down. I can tell you. I, you I can see that have, being the case. If you do not have four beers in you, Double Down is awful. But, like, if you're with a group of people watching Double Down, it's amazing. It's amazing. I mean, watching these dudes die while trying to talk about how many laptops were destroyed. <laughs> or, or, or the tuna. Oh, my God. How much tuna does he eat? He eats so much tuna. Yeah, watching those dudes just die while trying to describe that film. Is I think Max, I watched and that. Max Landis there. I watched that, and then I think I watched. I don't know what their shows are called. What's the one where it's just the two guys and they're at like a photo develop? It's just two guys and they're oh, at like no, a, it's it's a uh, that's half in the bag. Yeah, I don't get what what is the reference? I'm confused. What does that mean? Okay, okay, okay. It, half in the bag. You're you're okay. You're at a level ten. You're not at level ten yet for you know memes. So half in the bag is just their basic movie like what's out in theaters review but there's like this this side there's this b story that they work in a vcr repair shop that's when they've been scamming this guy mr plinkett for years saying they're fixing his vcr but they're paid hourly okay it's a very big b story that you should watch all the episodes not for the movie reviews but just to find out what happens in the b story but is that not where they wait why is it called half in the bag though I don't know. I'm not. I'm not level eleven yet. True. I thought it was a reference to like, you know, when movies get taken out of theaters, it's like put into some sort of bag that means oh, it's going to DVDs now, and maybe they're looking at movies that are like on I their mean, way. For out. all I know, that's correct. But I guess but that's the, true. But but half in the bag is just them uh, talking. It's still about, kind like, of what's the same theaters. show. I think the yeah. half in the bag episode that I watched was them talking about Parasite. Among, I think they did two movies, but one of them was Parasite. It's always, it's usually two movies. And then some of them are, I usually watch it just to get without the spoilers, just to see if I would want to watch that movie. Cause I usually agree generally with what with, they think is worth watching. Yeah. I'll, I'll sometimes, if Mike likes it, I'll usually go see it. Cause I know it's probably schlocky, but if like Jay likes it, I know I'll probably enjoy it unironically. Right. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. 
But yeah, I, I watched can, a few I, of their things. I feel I feel like to really appreciate their channel, you got to watch a lot of movies. I don't think you can just like sort of like filmography and the idea of movies and watch their movies so, and like even understand half the shit that they're talking about. So I got into movies like with my dad cuz he and he'd recommend a lot of we'd watch together like a lot of like 80s movies. Right. And then I kind of started to like movies a lot back then and then Movie Pass came along. You remember Movie Pass? I remember Movie Pass. That was the Netflix-esque pass you could buy that allowed you to watch an unlimited number of movies in theaters for the 5 months it existed. Yeah. Basically, like, I got into that, and then I was just seeing movies constantly. And then my friend mentioned, like, hey, you might like this YouTube channel. They watch, like, bad movies, and that might be something you'd be into. And I was like, uh, sh- sure, why not? And I th- I don't I remember I had my first video of them was Best of the Worst, and it was, like, the one where, like, you could create your own doll based off your looks. And it was, that like, was, hilarious. That was the premise of the movie? It was a best of the worst is never about movies or wheel of the worst. Oh, it's like you send in random videos and they watch it to see what's on it. So like, I don't know. It just, it just, I just fell in love with that channel based off of just their content. I could see them. I don't, I I feel like I need to watch more movies or maybe I need to watch more of them to really appreciate the sort of charm behind the dudes. But I know like, a lot of people, like you and Internet Historian, watch the fuck out of Red Letter Media. So I feel like I got to give it a go. But I also haven't I remember, seen as many movies as you guys. I remember it was kind of surreal because uh, What's-His-Face, Jack's film, shouted them out too. Like back in the day when they were smaller, he was just mentioning that he likes Red Letter Media. I think he mentioned it like two years ago. No, I remember him saying that Jackass. too. It was during a Jackass. Yeah, he took a break. From the the... the he went like, like all serious. He's always all of a sarcastic, yeah. and all of a sudden he went serious in the in the one video he's never serious in to give them a shout out to shout out Red Letter Media. Yeah, why is that? Why is Red Letter Media so well respected amongst like movie YouTubers and movie watchers? Like, do the, are there not other authentic movie you should review watch, channels? You should watch. You should watch their movies because they produce movies. They produce movies. They have one movie that's like a. It's Space Cop, which is an ode to bad movies where they try to make their own. Their own like, bad movie? Yeah, but it's all make it's like using stereotypes from other bad movies and like just use just going with it. Hmm. Like it, it's fun. That does sound like something I would enjoy. There's like some OG bad movies, like B movies that people kind of reference. Like you know the room. I'm aware of the room. I've seen a bit of it. And then the other one is Samurai Cop. I haven't seen Samurai Cop. Samurai Cop's a little bit smaller than The Room. Like the physically? Room, like it's a different size disc? Um, no. <laughs> like just cult following wise. Cause oh, like, sure. Well, The Room's massive. The Room's the bad movie. Yeah. I mean, everyone should watch The Room. Even if you don't like bad movies, you should watch The Room. I did not. I've I did only not seen it. Because, yeah, I'm just so adjacent to memes that I've at this point experienced enough memes from anything that's big enough in the fucking internet stratosphere to have a like you know mid-level understanding of even if i'm not really into a particular video game tv show anime movie i'll at least know the name of the main character or the basic storyline just because i'll have experienced the memes to come from it yeah and in remember, that way i, I know the I, ordered, I know the room i ordered the room and i got it and it came with like a pamphlet selling like Tommy Wiseau brand underwear or something brilliant with like with like three photos of him just modeling underwear brilliant I love that dude a hell of an entrepreneur Tommy Wiseau yep can I change Uh, my answer for what I think my favorite movie of all time is because I said Parasite more or less that's such a recency bias I feel like it's old boy old boy yeah the South Korean absolute phenomenon old boy that is such a good fucking movie have you not seen old boy i don't think i have bro the one with the dude who's in prison for 15 years watches his daughter grow up on tv and then spends the rest of the movie figuring out why he was randomly in prison for 15 years (laughs) no alex don't google old boy by the way and don't go to pictures Oh my god. What do I even do? What do I do? I wish I had chat. 
We got to do this live. What the fuck do I do? You're a movie guy and you haven't watched Old Boy? I never claimed to be like, watch everything. There's so much. No, so much- you're a movie guy, though. I know. I know you don't want the moniker because then there are expectations to it. That's why I never say that the podcast comes out every week because it doesn't. Every week, by the way, remember to subscribe. But I, but I already said that. Uh, listen, I'm going to give you a synopsis of Old Boy, okay? Okay, okay. Oh, this is going to be a hard one. Okay, so there's a lot of fantastic cinematography with the South Korean film Old Boy. There's a lot of subtle cues to what's going on. There's a lot of callbacks. There's a lot of things that they make obvious, but then can also be inferred by the details in the show, right? So the Mm -hmm. story opens up with our main character, chubby as hell. The story opens up with a dude about to kill himself off a a building, but it it then opens up with our main character, chubby as hell, drunk in a police station, claiming that he has to get to his daughter's birthday. She's turning six or something, and the police won't let him out because he's far too drunk. Next scene is the bottom of a door. Imagine like a doggy door, but it's like a locking door you know, pull out door rather than just a flap. And you see the feet of somebody walk up, he kicks open the flap and he drops a plate of gyozas. And our main character sticks his head and shoulder out the door and starts grabbing his leg and goes, please, come on, it's been years. Why am I in here? Who are you? Why am I being kept in here? Come on, please, let me know what's going on. The dude's kicking his head back in, kicks in the gyozas, locks the doggy door, Camera pans to the inside of what looks like a hotel room. And our main character is just eating these gyozas. And over the time, it shows that he's only got like one channel on the fucking hotel TV thing that he's on. And he sees that his daughter's like a pianist or a violinist or something. And he's missing out on her growing up. And he starts tattooing a line into his arm for every year that he's into. And 10, 15 years later, also occasionally gas pours into the room and knocks him out for God knows what reason. Immediately, there's so many questions. Nobody has any idea what the fuck's going on. He doesn't know what the fuck's going on, but somebody's imprisoned him. He needs to figure out why. He starts at one point to start digging out of um, the prison uh, by like breaking open the bathroom wall. And just as he's about to leave, I think that's when he sees that his daughter's on TV and he decides to hang out a bit. I might be confusing the original South Korean old boy with the American movie that was remade by Spike Lee. And I I watched your movie sucks Adam's video comparing the difference between the two and how bad the remake was. So if I'm getting details confused, shut up, okay? Mm -hmm. So either he leaves... And is able to escape or the gas comes in, knocks him out, and he wakes up on the roof. 15 years, right? And he's on the roof and there's this dude who's on the ledge of the roof about to die, about to jump off. And he walks up to the dude. He's like, wait, wait, wait. You can't kill yourself. I haven't talked to anybody in 15 years. I haven't heard anybody's voice. I have no fucking idea what's happened to me. Get over here. I have to tell you my story. And he tells him what's going on, and the guy's like, no, you don't understand. I'm a terrible person. He's like, there's no way you're a terrible person. You can't be a worse person to have to go and do this. And he tells him his story. He gets a bit of human contact, and then the dude who was about to commit suicide starts to tell him his story, and our main character just gets up and walks away. Uh And then I think it's supposed to be an ode of like, you know, he's disconnected from societal interaction, but like he's on a mission at this point. So he needs to figure out who it is that's that's done this to him, right? So he starts going to every Chinese bar or every bar nearby that sells dumplings. And he's like, I've eaten nothing but these stupid fucking dumplings for 15 years. I'll smell these things from a mile away. I'm going to figure out what the fuck happened, right? Yeah. Um, either before or after this point, he meets a girl um, who he confides in um, that, you know, this is what happened to him. And she agrees to try and help him. Uh, for God knows what reason, uh, but he trusts her and only her. Uh, maybe she's a cop. I don't fucking remember. Um, and then he goes to places. He finds a place that has the dumplings, uh, and he bumps into the dude who's kept him imprisoned, right? Knocks him out, brings him to somewhere, and I'm completely fucking up the story, but basically what happens is he goes on a bit of a killing spree. He beats up a bunch of dudes. He's trying to figure out what it is that's happened to him. And 
Like he's he's buff at this point, right? Like he's still way skinnier than he was at the beginning of the movie, but he's fucking people up left and right, right? There's some beautiful fight scenes that are like literally one shot six minutes where he's taking on 50 people in a hallway and it's all choreographed and gorgeous, right? Um, yeah. Eventually, uh, what's important to know here? Eventually he gets to the dude who has kept him imprisoned and he's ready to like stab him in the throat and before he does the dude rips open his shirt and shows him a scar that he's got across his chest and he goes i've got a pacemaker installed in me this remote in my hand with one click of a button stops my heart i know for a fact it works i paid a lot of money to make sure this is done and then he's also got so he's got that. He's like, if you want to kill me, I'll end it right here. But you're going to have no idea why you were locked away for 15 years. You will never know why you were locked away for 15 years. So he was like, you want to kill me? Go for it. And he sort of decides not to, right? And he goes, mm -hmm. you have 48 hours. Figure out who I am. Figure out why I locked you up or it's over. And then he leaves, right? And mm -hmm. then he's trying to figure out who the fuck this dude is. He also gives him a quote that's something along the lines of uh, small waves turn into massive tsunamis. He gives him some sort of quote like that, right? And so yeah. our main character is trying to figure it out. Meanwhile, he meets up with the girl who's been helping him. They end up sort of falling in love. He has sex with her. And then in the middle of that, gas starts pouring into the room like when he was trapped in the hotel room. And then... I can already see the comments telling me how fucking stupid I am for not remembering this correctly, but I feel like I'm getting the major points down. He has a flashback and remembers that when he was a kid, he remembers um, him peeping into a laundromat. The window's busted. He peeps in and he sees our antagonist feeling up his sister. And okay. then he's moving out of the town or something so as he's leaving or going to school or whatever, he tells his buddy, yo, man, I saw so-and-so filling up his sister. How crazy is that? That little thing that he told his buddy turned into a school-wide rumor that, you know, this brother and sister were doing God knows what with each other. Yeah. The antagonist, as at this point our protagonist has uh, confronted him at the end of this 48 hours and is telling him this, the antagonist lets him know that uh, his sister then had what he calls a shadow pregnancy where she believes she's pregnant, her stomach's growing, but, you know, obviously she isn't pregnant or maybe she... You're not sure if this was a phantom pregnancy or he got her pregnant and this was just his justification for putting the blame off to somebody else. But his sister ends up killing herself because of the rumors and the bullying that she's responding. It flashes Oof. back vividly to him trying to hold her hand as she falls off a bridge and dies. And he now blames our main character for this, right? Yeah. And he goes, okay, so you locked me up for 15 years. You got me. We're even. This is stupid. And he's like, I haven't even fucking started yet, bro. Oh, you have shit. no fucking clue what I've done. And he's like, do you remember your daughter? And he was like the concert pianist as he reveals that the TV show set is the room that they're in. And the concert pianist was, in fact, an actress that he hired to play on that TV in the hotel. Stupid. That's not your daughter. This is your daughter. As he plays a recording of him having sex with the girl in the hotel room. Oh. Pulls out his phone. Or pulls out her protagonist's phone. I don't remember when he took it. Daughter's calling. At this point, her protagonist is freaking out. Don't tell her. Please. You've made your point. I'll do anything. Goes as far as cutting out his own tongue. Antagonist goes, cool. Now you understand. Drops the remote to his pacemaker, walks over to an elevator on the far side of the room. Protagonist grabs the pacemaker, clicks the button, nothing happens. Antagonist goes stupid, closes the door, he goes downstairs. He ends up putting a bullet in his head after sort of accepting that he's done what he can. It's over. It's time for him to be out of here. And our protagonist then has to meet with his daughter as she asks him what goes on. And he goes, I appreciate everything. We can never speak again. Do well. And then disappears into the sunset or whatever the fuck. Crazy, right? Yeah, that's your favorite movie? Bro, the cinematography in it, I'm not doing it justice, bro. There's so many scenes 
that just makes so much sense in the way that he fights, the way that he talks. There's little details that I'm telling you that they don't say in the movie. They just show in the movie and you got to kind of watch and then be like, oh, that's why they did it this way sort of thing. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I feel like, I mean, Parasite's also a South Korean film. I feel like they do a beautiful job of telling a movie without just like blatantly reading it out to you. The fact that you sort of have to make assumptions and understandings of this is what the scholars rock means. This is why so-and-so said this, did this. This is why they dressed up this way. And I feel like I mean, old boy for being a movie from like 19 fucking 93, 97 or something like that. 2003. Is that the remake or the original? I think it's the original, but I don't know. You could, I, I have no stake in this. Um, no, I think there's definitely, I mean, there's American directors who do that too. It's just like the bar for a Korean film to come to your attention is probably a lot higher than for any English movie to come to your attention. You know what I mean? I think that's true, but I, I mean, I guess I haven't also seen it's like the when real... someone, it's like when you listen to a classic rock station, you're like, every song's amazing because they're pulling from like the top songs of like the last four decades sure. instead of, you know, the newest stuff that you may or may not like. Well, I mean, what would you say your favorite genre of movie is? I would say mine from the few, again, I haven't watched a ton of movies, but from the movies that I've thoroughly enjoyed has to be psychological thrillers. It would probably be psychological horror if I wasn't such a pussy and I could actually watch them. But for the time being, it's psychological thrillers. And I feel like that's a fuck. That is the psychological thriller. For the record, like, if you, since you haven't seen Old Boy, Old Boy is like up with the tears of like Godfather. Like people put it up there with the Kino of Kino. Yeah. What would you no, say yours is? I'd say it's like, like it's, I guess I would call it like an like organized crime. Like oh, really? the good the good fellas, the reservoir dogs, the oceans eleven, but like the original. And I do like I like the the new ones too, but have you seen like, have I told you to watch Great Pretender on Netflix? You haven't. You should maybe watch Great Pretender on Netflix. I think I gave it either a seven or an eight. It's got a beautiful art style. It's like a twenty six episode anime. But it's a heist anime, a very good heist anime. I do like a good heist. Give it a go. I mean, if you're if you're dicking around at work all day, it's it's very it, all the stories are like in five episode chunks, so it's very easy to chew through. I don't think it's twenty six episodes. I think it's thirteen episodes. I think like there's two shows I'm trying to watch right now on Netflix. That's uh, that, I'll count that as the second. But I'm trying to also. Someone told me to watch The Queen's Gambit, just because I'm a big chess player. The Network. Queen's Gambit. I don't know if I've heard that recently because I saw a meme of the show or I've been watching a lot of chess TikToks because I've been doing both. We play a lot of chess at work. Um, just in our free time, we like, we'll like challenge each other. I'm kind of known as the Bobby Fisher of the office, not the, to toot my own horn. Is Where's Bobby Fisher on the scale you of... Don't know, you don't know who Bobby Fisher is? I know who Carl Magnuson is. Oof. Bobby, you gotta look up Bobby Fisher right now. We gotta go down a wormhole. Is he similar to Bobby Flay? I know him. We have a guy at work and we call Bobby Flay because he's not good at chess, but he thinks he is. So we call him. So it's like a, he's Bobby Flay instead of Fisher. Bobby Fisher was like, is a the greatest chess player of all time. Is that uh, yeah. not the dude I named? Who, Magnus. Yeah. No, Bobby. Uh, Bobby Fisher is greater because he's American. Ah, okay. Is he um, the Asian like, dude that's on Twitch? Probably not. Bobby that, Fisher. That dude's name probably um, isn't dis- Bobby, Bobby Fisher. Bobby Fisher. Bobby Fisher disappeared. Oh, like he was that like, good at chess. Well, he was told. What? I think. I think at one point he was told not to play the Russian guy because the U.S. was boycotting events with Russia. So he like defected and escaped to like Sweden or Iceland, and then played the Russian guy in chess and like beat him easily. And then had to like live off the grid for years. Because he doesn't want Russia hunting him down to expose no, the, the US, fact that the... the U.S. considered him like a traitor or whatever. Because he... Oh, wait. Was this during the Cold War? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought this was like last year. I was like, what? We don't take that no, shit no, that no, seriously. No. no, no. This was not Hikaru on Twitch. <laughs> no. It was like... I don't, I'm going to do his story really injustice. But like he basically... It's like, fine. Dis- I did the same. He basically disappeared for like i like 
like two decades and then resurfaced for one rematch all of a sudden because like someone i think said like hey we'll give you like two million if you come out and beat him again i think his opponent was spasky if i remember correctly and i think and then there was like this story that like he like faked his own death because like some like grandmasters were playing chess online and this anonymous user showed up and just started like just handing it to them like right destroying them and they were like this guy plays like bobby but like he wouldn't tell him their name like the guy would not say his name or like how he was so good but like they're like this dude plays exactly like bobby would play us yeah and like bobby fisher is like the the top tierist of of chess players this dude looks like he can handle a queen's gambit yeah oh. is that what a queen's gambit is about the Queen's Gambit is a chess opening. What do you mean a chess opening? Like a tournament? No, like it's a way of opening the board. No, I like, I'm t- I I know. I'm talking about the um the show on Netflix. Is it about the story of Bobby Fischer? No, I wish. Uh oh. the Queen's Gambit is about some orphan, I think. Oh, okay. That's weird. Well, I guess it's not weird. Chess is like the world's oldest game, right? So is Only there a about, Bob? I wish there was a Bobby Fisher movie where Bobby was played by like Justin um, Timberlake. No, in my head, it's it should be Shia LaBeouf. Really? Oh, actually, oh, oh, wow. No, there is a movie, and he's played by Tobey Maguire. I gotta watch that. Interesting. And then it has Lee Lee Shriver plays Spassky. I don't know who that is. Uh, do you remember that really bad Wolverine movie, Wolverine Origins? Is that the? <laughs> What the? the what with, would I the say with, there to discern it from other Wolverine movies? What the fuck? It's would the I? one with it's the one with Deadpool in it, where they sh- they sew Deadpool's mouth shut, and Deadpool gets like laser eyes. What the fuck? I'm pretty this... sure. No, I've seen Logan. I've seen Logan. I haven't seen. Oh no, Logan. no, no. So like this movie was so bad, they had to redo everything. Like they had to rethink the entire X Men like franchise. It was so bad. After it released, you mean they didn't like it reshoot the movie and then release no, no, it? No, no, it was it was Wolverine Origins, I think it was. Okay. And oh my god, it was a pile of turd. Like the only thing it answered for us was how he got his jacket. That's something. Oh, Will I Am was in it too. Well, we have to watch it now. Yes, you do. So, where what were the we? fuck were we even talking about? Oh, we we're talking about movies. We were sort of talking about movies. Listen up. So I uploaded that video about anime. <laughs> video uh, Memes continue to be dog shit. I decided to upload a food vlog. Exploring McDonald's secret menu. I basically went to McDonald's. I got myself an apple pie. I stuck it in a McFlurry. Called it the McFlurry apple pie. And then proceeded to do four other stupid things. That video, despite being a car vlog shot on my phone, has done just as many views as my meme related content. Are you trying to get into like the next content cop where Ian calls you out for doing car videos? I don't want to continue doing low effort videos ever, (laughs) but I have had to rethink what I consider to be a video that's worth making for people. Because at the end of the day, I'm not 15,000 people watching this video, right? It's 15,000 other people watching the video. And, you know, I might be gatekeeping them from having an extra 10 minutes of enjoyment for something that I could totally make that I don't make because I don't think it's up to par of this arbitrary bar that I've set for myself. Um, So quick side note, uh, I showed up late for work last week, which is not news to you, right? As somebody who's worked with me when we both worked at an electronic store, I used to do that a lot. That do be how you is. I don't get a ton of sleep. I love to blame YouTube for that, but really I just have poor time management skills. You just like that schedule. Why go to sleep when the internet's, you know? <laughs> I was going to say more, but I was like, that's... when you wake up, I, I promise. Nah, you, you can never be sure. But anyway, I had something to the tune over the course of like 12 months. I had something to the tune of like 60 tardies at my old job. Which is a lot, considering that I only worked four days a week. I had five. I probably showed up late just as often as I showed up on time. Like, I would frequently, like, my, my managers wouldn't even yell at me anymore. They were just like, oh, Samet's coming in a couple hours late. 
<laughs> Try not to continue doing that, Smet. You know what I mean? Like, it, it'd be a fucking occasion when I showed up on time, like, for a couple weeks straight. Yeah. Um, but this new job is 45 minutes away, infuriatingly far, right? 45 minutes away, and they're obviously not at all used to me showing up several hours late to a shift, right? Um, I because it's a new you job. Not. I've been there for like nine months or something. So I showed up once super late, and this is over the course of like, they didn't really do anything to try and remedy the COVID situation. Like everybody else in the office is working remotely, but I'm the one building the computers and hardware, so I can't work remotely. I have to go there and build it, right? And so I took a lot of time off. I went down to like only working 10 hours a week where I'd only show up two days just to limit my exposure or whatever. And then like yeah. slowly over the course of time, they like coerced me into coming in more hours because like we had a bunch of orders to fill and like I was the bottleneck because if I'm not building stuff, they can't sell stuff, right? Um, so I show up late for work like three weeks ago, two weeks ago. And it's like they're a little bit annoyed, but I get everything done during the week and it's not the end of the world. And then... At one point, my manager, like, got upset with me because he was like, yo, man, you said you're going to show up at, like, 11, and then you show up at 2, and you don't update me. And I was like, totally fair, right? I'm super late. I should have said something. I've just gotten into the habit of just being late occasionally. Like, my bad. Like, we'll, we'll call this a one-off thing. And then it happened again last week, and this is maybe four months after I'd shown up late for the first time. Uh, nothing too serious. I show up. I get my work done. We don't talk about it. But then... This week, or whatever, a week after that, I show up equally late, right? Like, there, he's leaving me voicemails at, like, 11.30. I'm supposed to be at work at, like, 11, and I'm waking up in bed at, like, 12.45, right? Super fucking late. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yo, we're super behind schedule. You're already, like, only working seven hours instead of eight hours a week, which I'm doing because, like, I'm not eating because I have to clock out for lunch. So it's like, I'm not going to go there... I can work seven hours. I can't really work eight hours without getting super hungry because with the 45-minute drive, we're talking 10 hours out of my day to work a seven-hour shift. Like, I don't want to add an hour of lunch to do one more hour of work after that. It doesn't make any sense. So I'm just working seven hours, right? Yeah. And he's like, between you only working seven hours, this and that, you know, like he gave me a bunch of shit for it basically. So I was mm -hmm. like, listen, at one point you asked me when I was only working 10 hours a week, do I want to come back full-time or should you look into hiring somebody else? And I was like, okay, I'll come back full time. And that's sort of how they got me to start working 40 hours a week again. And I was like, I think it's time for you guys to look for someone else to try and help supplement my hours. Maybe the way that he put it to me was that we can try and hire somebody part time to make up for the hours that you're not working. But if we're only able to hire somebody full time, I don't know if we're going to have space for both of you. And I was like, okay, fine. I'll come back full time. This is basically come back full time or like you might need to resign. Right? Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'll come back full time. But now, thanks to all the lovely people listening to the Spawncast right now, I'm just about making how much money I would need to make in order to be able to sustain my normal living expenditures for rent and car and everything between a combination of YouTube and Twitch and Patreon. All of that combined uh, brings me close. So now I was confident in quitting at work. So what I was going to do is work through November, work through December, possibly January, rack up the income from having YouTube full-time money and work full-time money and give myself a cushion that I could quit comfortably. And then, you know, if YouTube suddenly cucks me hard January, February, if a bunch of videos get demonetized, I'll be okay. And I can take three, four, five months, start uploading more videos. You and me can get more consistent with making sure we get a podcast out every single week. And I should be okay because, you know, numbers compound. They only go up, right? Yeah, um, that's how life works. That's, yeah, I mean, that's how YouTube works, at least. Um, and so I show up late again this week, right? Like Monday. And my manager's like, or you guys are going to listen to this like Monday or Tuesday. So last week, right? So my manager's like, yo, between the hours that you aren't putting in and the fact that you're showing up like three hours late today, like we're super cucked on production hours. We're going to be behind on stuff. We weren't, Right. And I was like, and I told him, okay, so you, you guys should look into hiring somebody else. The day after he apologizes and he goes, you know, maybe I was being a little bit hard on, you know, you coming into work late or what have you. Like we got everything done. We're actually ahead of schedule. You know, I don't want you to feel like you're not doing good work. You're definitely doing good work. Just, you know, I, I wasn't aware that, you know, we were ahead of schedule or whatever. And yeah. I was like, yeah, you should hire someone else. And I was like, when I 
started working at this job, I thought there'd be more responsibilities, like more stuff to do. Like initially when I got hired, they also said that they needed somebody to be able to handle their social media and they needed somebody to be able to handle their marketing. And I was like, oh yeah, I would be very excited to be able to learn how to do that. Cause I don't do that for YouTube, but like I know big YouTubers do do like Instagram marketing and Facebook marketing for their merch or pushing out their videos or whatever. So I was like, this is all in my wheelhouse of what I would need to learn for YouTube. So that even better. Um, but either due to COVID or because of what was prioritized, it very quickly devolved into me just listening to podcasts for nine hours and building computers mindlessly, which is cool for how much money I get paid, but is boring and kind of soul draining, if I'm being honest. Yeah. And again, having to drive out 45 minutes to this place is an hour and a half out of my day just on commute to go and do this. So it was not what I was used to. I was used to being 10 minutes from work sort of thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I tell them, you know, I'm probably going to quit. You know, I think on top of the commute being difficult, once it starts snowing, that drive is going to get even more tough. And it just doesn't make sense for me to do this and have to take a one hour lunch that I don't get paid for in order to do basically the same amount of work because I'm paid hourly, right? So me being ahead of schedule saved me there that I could come in three hours late and still get everything done. But I got yelled at for coming in three hours late despite getting all my work done. And I didn't get paid for that three hours, right? So it's like, I'm the one taking the L. I could have stretched out that three hours, pretended to do as much work. And at the end of the week, you would have paid me a bunch of extra money for showing up on time and getting the same amount of stuff done. Instead, I was just on top of my shit knowing, hey, there's a good chance I'm going to oversleep. Let's just get as much done as early as I can. Anyway, so basically I told my manager that I was planning on quitting. I'm, I'm planning on sticking around until you guys can find someone to replace me. I will train them so that they can do everything that I do. And then I'm out, which I did again. I did not intend to do until like January, right? I wanted at least a couple months of rent saved up before I went and did that. But then, you know, between him getting on my case about showing up late, I was like, this is as good of a time as any to give them a heads up. Maybe they find a dude next week and I'm you know, on my own come December, maybe it takes them six weeks to find a guy and it does end up being January before, you know, I got to cut ties with the, with the main job. But yeah, I did a whole announcement thing on Twitter where it's like, I basically told my manager that I'm going full time on YouTube and Twitch. That is still the a plan. It will be just a little bit longer, but now is like no excuses. I do have to get into the habit of uploading more videos. So realistically, the easiest thing to do is to do two videos a week, right? do a podcast, do my normal video a week and try and crank out an extra video as frequently as I can um, in order to make sure that my numbers stay up as high as they are now and then not have to worry too much about uh, being able to pay rent and stuff. So my, my point with all of that is that it's good that I found that, you know, doing content other than just reviewing what meme is popular that week uh, will still be entertaining to everybody who's taken the time to subscribe to the channel. And in discovering that and sort of accepting that, I think I'm just like sort of dropping the bar for what I expect is like content ready stuff for the channel. Cause like at the end, I do so many videos, you know what I mean? Like I would get that your videos need to be basically perfect. If you only upload as often as Frederick Knudsen or internet historian, where it's like you're getting four, six videos a week. Like they better not be garbage. Yeah. But I think when you're doing two, three videos a week and a podcast and you're streaming four days out of the week, I think it's okay to just upload stuff that's a food vlog every now and again. You know what I mean? So long as you're not completely devolving off of the videos that got you there in the first place. I mean, you got to mix it up. At the very least, you got to mix it up. Yeah. What are your thoughts on all that, Alex? You thinking what any any of that? What's ha- how, how you been? What's going on? What's the question? <laughs> I don't know. I thought you might have some questions about like, I mean, I certainly had some questions about going full time on YouTube and stuff, but I, mean, I, mean, I always sort of imagined that I would be in a much, I always hoped, I guess, not imagined. I always hoped that I would be in a comfortable place where I'm making like a billion dollars a year. And it's like, yeah, I can totally quit my day job. And instead it's like, holy fuck, I don't even know if I'm making enough money to be able to pay everything that I need to. That whole story was that was the focus, but in my head I'm like, how the hell is this guy three hours late? What are you talking about? Listen, I leave my place at like 9.45, 10-ish, and I get there at like 10.45, a little bit before 11, and I work until like 7-ish, right? Eight-hour day. 
Lately, yeah. it's been closer to six-ish, seven-hour day, right? But, you know, this is, what did I upload? I don't know if I was uploading anything. I think I was just Twitch streaming or something, or I might have uploaded uh, my trash anime taste, something like that. I'm working on that video. I'm recording until two in the morning and then editing and finalizing everything by like 4 a.m., doing the thumbnails and everything. Now it's 5 a.m. and I need to be up at nine. You know, I hit the sack at five. I maybe actually get to sleep by like six. Alarms are going off at nine and I just do not fucking wake up until 1230, at which point I'm like, you ever like wake up and you're very well rested and it's immediately terrifying because you're like, wait, why? I should be tired. Why am I? Why? Why am I so well rested right now? No, you know why? No, I discovered that the best alarm clock is anxiety. <laughs> what? So I'm terrified of being late to things. I'm terrified. Oh, I'm not anymore. In my in my head, I cannot be late. I'm, f- I'm like every day at work. I'm I'm early by like a half hour at least. So like that's the I right thing up, to do. I wake up every day. I don't go to work, so my work schedule, I don't go into work till 11, but every day I'm awake at, at 6 a.m. Mm, that's kind of yeah. crazy. Yeah. Is that due to anxiety of being late to work, or are you just an early bird? That sounds like you're just an early bird, dude. You just wake up early. Well, no, because you know, even on my off days, I just wake up. That's what I'm saying. If it was a work anxiety thing, you'd be waking up at 6 a.m. on the days you have work. Well, no, because I'm afraid if I if I give myself a day off... On my work days, I'll also give myself, I'll, 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 I'll slip out of my rhythm. So I have to stay in the rhythm. That is how that works. Yes. So I have to, I have to, I can't sleep in. I also Wait, can't How the fuck naps. do you do anything at night? We've played games until like two, three in the morning. I'm you're, still going to wake up. At you're waking up at 6 a.m.? Still going to. I, okay, I'm here's. Gonna wake, I'm going to wake up at six tomorrow. I want to get into the discussion of what it's going to be like being a full-time youtuber because i just need some serotonin and like some adrenaline that like i'm making the right decision to look at like all the positive sides of being able to quit my job and stuff because right now it's just terrifying and scary right so we'll we'll jump to that but you have news you gotta you gotta tell the podcast real quick which i've completely forgotten about because i've been talking for an hour straight yeah, we actually kind of had a chance to lead into it earlier. You're gonna realize what I, what I mean in a second, but I got a puppy. Is the big news? Yeah, Alex got a fucking Doge, not a I Shiba, a baby a Husko. Pe- a few people might have seen it if they follow you on Instagram. What's your Instagram? At Sumeto Media, as is everything else in the world. But yeah, Alex got an adorable. She's just black and white, right? Does she have any brown? Oh She's wait, I have an Instagram that you I can have. pull up. This is a video podcast. I was waiting for you to do it, but... Oh, sorry. Slash R slash Sumeto Media now. This is amazing. Listen, it's, it's slow but working. Uh, here's Alex's dojo. Oh, that's not the right button. Fuck. Look at that. Oh, she's brown. She's brown. And she's got little socks. Her name is Arya Stark from Game of Thrones. Someone on someone on your Discord did a great edit where they swapped your faces. Yeah, that was um, terrifying. That was terrifying. Why do we live? <laughs> Just to suffer. <laughs> anyway, her name's Nymeria. How old is she now? She is right now 16 weeks. 16 weeks. Okay, thank you for the math I like, problem. I like, I like doing that because it's like with babies where you have to do math to yeah, it's, how old they are. Have you seen that Side 9 Happiness comic that's like, how old's the baby? And she's like 15 weeks. And he's like, oh, you like math? Determine the velocity. And then yeets the baby <laughs> behind him. Oh, uh, I, I just, I don't know, man. It's it's funny watching people like look up immediately like they're doing like the math calculator. Cause yeah, they're the like, way you oh, have, man, way- she's... How the, wrong has someone been? That's what I want. The way know. the way you you activate your head calculator is you look up at the sky and a calculator apparently appears in your mind. Yeah, and you divide four sixteen by four, and you get what's a four? So she's two and a half years old. Yes, she is already an adult. She is a wide, wide. That's so, not an adjective. So when you met her, she was ten pounds, fourteen she's, pounds. She was probably 12 pounds. Yeah. Right. And she's currently 28. What? That's huge. 
Yeah, How long bigger. ago was this? October 10th. Uh, so almost two months. Yeah. Month and a half. Yeah, she's well, bigger now. Yeah, quite a bit. She's like literally doubled in size more so. Yeah. Are her she, ears still sharp? Does she know how to droop them for hunting effectiveness? She does like this like radar thing with them where she like turns them when she hears things behind her. It's really cute. And if you touch them, she like twitches them. Interesting. Because she's adorable. What tricks does she know so far, Alex? What have you taught her? Uh, what is her can, move set? She, she can sit. She can lay down. She can shake hands. And she can catch things right out of the air. So, like, you throw her a treat, she can just catch it. No bounce. That's pretty wild. I yeah. can't even do that. She's She's got a very good moveset for her age. Um, we got we got plans to teach her other stuff. But right now, it's just making sure she doesn't pee in the house. Is she your dog, or is she the family dog? She's mine. I pay for everything. I take her out the most, walk her the most. And I take her to the puppy training class. Wait, it's called Puppy Kindergarten. It's adorable. Pupper Garden, huh? Yeah. So, like, if you moved out, she'd come with you, right? For sure. Yeah, that's your dog. I would say not, that because Alex, not her. Alex has a family dog. Yeah, they don't get along. Or she doesn't care about him, but he is, like, not happy about it. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. I mean, he's... You know, he's a nine-year-old Maltese. Dog people probably know what that implies. I don't. You can, you can Google a Maltese right now. I can point out to you which one he looks like. Sure. His name is Ricky, and if you watch I Love Lucy, <laughs> Maltose, also known as Maltobias or Malt Sugar. Uh, switch the O for an E. Maltese's. Oh, grandma dogs. These guys. But it's 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 a short haired one. Oh, so these guys. Uh that looks way too big. Shih Tzu? You sure he's not a Shih Tzu? I'm positive he's a Maltese. He looks like um Stop moving your mouse, goddammit. it. Um Wow, these dogs are way cuter than Ricky. Ricky's a little <laughs> rat. <laughs> Let's do a fluffy Maltese. How about that? Oh, they're still cute. He did look like this at one point. But then oh, the life he, got to him. He just looks sad all the time. <laughs> even sad Maltese. Nymeria, I can do that. Even before, even before Nymeria. Oh my God! That that that's that third one. <laughs> this guy. Yeah. That's him. He's. Oh God! No wait wait. Move your mouse up one. This. To the right. This. That. That's Ricky. That's Ricky. He looks like a Ricky. Is this yeah. that different than all the other maltoses we just took a look at? I mean, I get the expression is different, but that's... I was looking for the, the, the hair doesn't look... It's like it's well kept. Oh, yeah. I mean, I thought he was a brown dog. So I was He's about to type in brown, brown mal... spots. He's white with brown spots. Yeah, dogs are interesting. I was thinking about getting a cat just so that, like, when I'm here all day, I wouldn't be alone. But I don't know if a cat would provide... The, you know, like the sort of energy where it's like you don't want to hang out with somebody, but like you'd rather have them in the room while you do something that has nothing to do with them. You know what I mean? No, I like, really don't. <laughs> it isn't really something you do now, both a combination of us being older and also like doing all our gaming on the computer. But like you ever just want to like play Pokemon or something on the PSP or like watch a movie on your laptop, but you'd rather do it at your friend's place, even if they're just going to be on their computer doing homework or whatever. And you don't really interact, but it's just like, I'd rather know that I'm not in here with a ghost. No. Is that not a thing people do? That can't be just me. I mean, it might, but it's not me. Eh, well, I don't, I don't. Anyway, I thought a cat might give me that sort of energy where it's like, we're not hanging out actively. I'm not scratching him behind the ears, but he's over there on the couch I'm over here on the computer, and occasionally I can look over and be like, hey, look, I got a cat, and then just go back to behaving as if I didn't have a cat. You know what I mean? Yeah, so where's like your pupper Nymeria. right now? Are you currently holding her, or is she doing her own thing? Uh, so she's fully crate trained, so she spends like most of the day in her crate, except for like her like five walks. So she walks like five miles a day to get her energy out, 
but like she just she like sits in her crate quietly. Okay, she's a husko. Voice. That's right. They have stupid energy. She's but she's really independent and she spends most of the day sleeping. So I think we delayed recording because I had to take her for her like final walk of the night. What's courting? What before recording? Oh, yes. I thought that was a dog term. Sorry. No, no, no. Before recording this, we had to you had to wait for me to walk her because I like to walk her before putting her to bed just to get that final bit of energy out. Right. And she probably spent the first fifty feet of the walk refusing to move because she didn't want to do it because she was tired. Right. And she's really stubborn, and it's really cute, but I'm stronger, so I just pulled her. Nice. Wait, if she's already tired, wouldn't you just be able to skip the walk? No, no. She's not actually tired. She just doesn't like leaving her crate. Ah. She's really, really shy. Interesting. Wait, so you went on a mile walk before recording? Yeah. And you do that up to five times a day? Yeah. I don't think humans were made to walk that much, Alex. That's a lot of walking. Yeah. Um, I hate to break it to you, but people do, in fact, do more than five a day. That's ridiculous. Absurd. I refuse to accept that. You walked a, You were on a retail job wearing your feet all day. Yeah, you I won, didn't enjoy it. Thousand, and I you certainly thousand would... percent eclipse five miles a day. Nah. I mean, maybe many, like a me? maybe a real retail employee that actually helped people and didn't sit on their phone all day in the back. Do you know how much steps a day I had at that job? I mean, I you a, were running to the Fitbit. you were running to the front of the store and back pretty often because you had to stage stuff. I wasn't doing it anywhere near that frequently. I think you like I was you doing, definitely could have hit five miles in your department. I was doing like thirty thousand steps a day. What does that equate to in miles? Can you Google that for so everyone can see? Uh, thirty steps to miles. 30,000 steps would probably be about 11 miles. <laughs> I hate that job. That's just illegal, dude. I hated that job. My feet would hurt so bad at the end of the day. How long did you work there? Several years, right? Uh, I took that one break for an internship, but like a year total probably. I hated how long I had to stay on my feet. And I think it might have been due to me like trying to wear dress shoes when I started working there. But I my the feet were like sore constantly maybe for the first several weeks i want to say i think i think everyone went through that and then i can't ever really say that like my feet stopped hurting i think i just got used to it or got sick of being tired of it yeah i I don't know when it i don't know when it switch swapped but it definitely like a switch hit and i suddenly could do it yeah. Anyway, they have um so you're a dad now. It's tough. You got the dog because y- you said you wanted to have a hiking buddy. Yeah. Do you hike that frequently? Well, I like to hike when it's cold and no one else wants to go. But I do like hiking. How far it's is just- a hike? How long does a hike take? It depends on what trail, because like I'll use all trails and I'll just look up one in my area. Uh, I like to go on ones that don't have like paved paths, where it's just like you know through the woods, and just get like nice pictures at the top or whatnot. But I would say like five or six miles at once, maybe like three there, three back, or over the course of how much time? Like, are you are you running this thing? Are you taking breaks? Is it a brisk walk the whole time? I'd say brisk walk, but I don't care how many times I stop. When do you go on these hikes, Alex? Uh, like weekends when I'm off. Like early like, as fuck in the morning? It's better to. I think I think my old rag story tells you it's better to go early. Um, no, it's better when it's cooler because it gets hot on those hikes. But, I mean, I like, so with my job, I get like Thursdays off and Friday off. It's really nice to go during weekdays. I guess less so during the pandemic, but like, no one's there so you get the whole thing to yourself it's a nice feel so i said to myself i don't know if i ever said this out loud but i've got a couple things that i said i was going to change up about my lifestyle when i go full-time on youtube because i would credit a lot of my 
um, sort of bad behavior when it comes to being an adult to the fact that I was basically juggling two jobs. And one of the biggest benefits of going full-time on YouTube is the fact that you can do most everything from home and basically write your own schedule. If I was really good at time management, I could take two days out of the week planning, two days out of the week recording, and get two videos and a podcast done and leave my weekends and a whole Friday available for me to do whatever, right? Obviously, you could spread that out however you want to. But the things that I said to myself that I was going to do, I said, A, I was going to stop vaping because I very much vape as like a coping mechanism for I'm home, I'm relaxed, let's get this nicotine going and just not think about the fact that this is, you know, going to be the rest of my life juggling two jobs potentially, right? Yeah. And the second thing was I was going to stop eating like shit slash start working out, basically lose this fat suit of a body that I've put on over the course of the five years that I worked at that electronic store and didn't have time to hit the gym the way that I did when I was in high school. Um, I've got my own place now, which means I have my own kitchen. I no longer need to share that with five different roommates so I can keep food in the house and eat ever so slightly healthier. I'm not super huge on the idea of going to a gym just because of COVID at the moment, but um, I, I totally cut it out. I was going to the gym every night, and now I don't go at all. The numbers in our area are dog shit, dude. Like it's we're bad. We have really bad numbers for COVID. Anyway, do you get what I'm getting at here? If we sync yeah, yeah. up some times here, once I finalize not going to my day job anymore, we can totally do athletic shit. I mean, I need to fucking take pictures for Instagram and stuff anyway, and yeah. obviously the exercise is probably also a part of it. We could go do stuff. Yeah, right now, I'm not hiking just because I need to get the dog up to a level where she can walk that much at once. Yeah, obviously. But I'm totally looking to get back into it like in like January. How do you feel about, do you eat super healthy in terms of, like I know you've made efforts and strides to lose a bit of weight over the course of time, but are you on like pretty extreme diets? Can you go eat fast food like every now and again? Yeah, I mean, I do. COVID ruined my whole my whole like drive to lose weight and keep it off and like exercise. Like I think I'm up like 15 pounds since COVID started. I'm up like 40. And and it's just because like my whole reason was I wanted to play soccer again, but now I can't because of COVID. Oh damn. Well, I mean, I'll be, I mean, I'll just get back to it. Like there's no doubt in my mind, but it's just like, I hate waiting. What do you mean play soccer again? You played in high school and then had an injury? Or I had several, but I just wanted to get back into it because I fell off and then gained a bunch of weight. And I just that do to get be back how it be. Like, I mean, I like being competitive and like playing sports. It's just fun. Yeah. TikTok has gotten very good with their algorithms and targeting different food spots around where I live. Like they know that I live in Northern Virginia and the whole DMV area has obviously got a lot of stuff. Yeah, but they figured that out for me too. Yeah. With the success of this fast food vlog, which was half shot in the dark and just me eating a bunch of stuff from McDonald's, the DMV area has got some fantastic foods. I mean, on top of going on hikes and stuff, if you wanted to take a trek out to like, you know, fucking, uh, you know, Southern Maryland and fucking try some crazy seafood, or we could try and do a fucking campfire where we just bring out like a tomahawk steak and try and like cook it on a bonfire. Does any of that sound interesting? Yeah, I need you to give a shout out to my favorite Greek restaurant in Burke. Uh, okay. It's a Spartan you can also do that. restaurant. Your audio you is like also on, on your video. Part. Oh, I meant like in a, if you're ever gonna do that, because like my it's my absolute favorite restaurant ever. Dude, we can go. I mean, I'm not super comfortable recording indoors, so hopefully they either have outdoor seating or you're fine with like eating on the trunk of a car. But no, they don't. They don't. I don't think they're doing indoor, and they don't have outdoor. We just we've been doing curbside with them. Perfect. My my point is, th- that's totally content for the channel now. We could do yeah. Sumetto's food reviews, do some Mimi content, work in some anime. I feel like the thing that's really opened up my ability to be able to go full time on YouTube, alongside the support of everybody who watches these videos, is the fact that I had the foresight to sort of build up my audience based on something that was very me. You know, that was much more my personality and my style of comedy rather than, ha ha, frog go burr every single week. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I want to take advantage of that to the fullest of my abilities. So 
you know, we got to, I mean, regardless, there's going to be a lot more videos going up on the channel after December. Um, and there's going to be a lot more Twitch streaming. So, you know, whenever Cyberpunk actually comes out, I'm going to fucking no life that game until it stops being fun. Can, but, can, uh, uh, so I've been afraid to ask this because I feel like it's such a big game that everyone's excited for. I have no idea what that is or Cyberpunk? what it's about. Yeah, I have no idea. There isn't no one, any. I, it, it passed right over me. I have no, what's it about? What kind of game is it? Anything so there's a small it? combination of reasons that that game has got as much notoriety as they do currently, right? So the mm-hmm. first one is that it's being made by CD Projekt Red. Do you know those guys? Assume I don't. So CD Projekt Red is the game developers that made The Witcher. Okay. Right. That Netflix show. Also the unbelievably <laughs> renowned video game that pretty much everybody gives a 10 out of 10. Witcher 1, yeah. Witcher 2, Witcher 3. It is a massive game. But the game's got unbelievable storytelling, fantastic gameplay. It doesn't necessarily penny pinch you at every single thing. They're very well respected as a game developer, right? So the fact that mm-hmm. they'd be taking on a futuristic cyberpunk-esque open world first person shooter that's story driven was like yo this is crazy we know they're gonna do a good job right because what you're saying is it's better than watchdog i never played watchdogs (laughs) but it takes like the implications it wasn't it wasn't wasn't good oh okay uh keanu reeves is in it Ooh. keanu reeves did the uh you know the your breathtaking meme that was at one of the announcements of cyberpunk right yeah i saw that i saw that so there's that it's been delayed a bit i think only because they didn't want to launch at the same time as something else but it was supposed to launch like in the middle of november now it's launching in the second week of december but so the gameplay looks three weeks yeah the gameplay looks okay it's a first person shooter but like i think you know if we learned anything from the witcher and God knows if I've learned anything from the games that I've been playing on Twitch between Yakuza and Persona. Like, story-driven games are fucking choice, bro. Like, if the story's good, if there's a lot of sort of character development and stuff, like, I couldn't care if the fucking actual gameplay was just clicking the same button over and over again. So, yeah. they have done yeah. a number of things. They have said that you can fully customize your character's genitalia to your heart's content, and they didn't specify any more beyond that so obviously people were like oh so you can be like a very feminine character with a dick but it's like they literally just said customize your genitalia so it's like i think you could have like a machine gun for a vagina or something and i don't know what they are i don't know what they're trying to imply there you don't i don't know i don't know but full customer characterization you can make them look like whatever you want to um that's kind of it. I don't know if anybody's actually looked at the gameplay and thought that, oh, this is going to be a great game. But I think they're highlighting the aspects that they know that the community is going to respond super well to. And everybody else is just sort of, bro, release the fucking game already. Like, we're all stuck at home. We need to play something. Yeah. But it looks good. Like, Keanu Reeves himself said that walking through the streets of this futuristic city is honestly breathtaking. And, I mean... I think I don't know. I it I, could I, suck. Nobody's saying it can't suck, but it's got everything good going for it. I feel like my peak video games wasn't good video games. It's like every Friday me and my friends would go to GameStop and there'd be like a five dollar bin of like trash games and we just grab one and just see what it was about and it was always garbage. What was the best of those five dollar bin games that you played? Um, you had to get a copy of like ATV Off Road Fury Two or something. Those we games did, were always like, cheap as shit. I think like th- this wasn't even like a small developer one. We got like the Golden Eye Double O Seven remake. That game was fantastic. That that game was awful. Wait, not Golden Eye. Sorry, no Nightfire. Nightfire was fantastic. No Golden Eye like Double O Seven Golden Eye was was so we were like because like. In our minds, this was like gonna be like the N sixty four Golden Eye. Yeah, but instead, oh yeah, the one that people speed run to death. But instead, this was a PlayStation three version where they updated basically nothing, but took out all the stuff you remember. 
Bruh. This is the game I remember playing the fuck out of on the PS2 just because my buddy had a PS2 and 007 Nightfire. And this had... I mean, I'm sure they had other games like this, but this game had so much multiplayer customization. You could play against bots and you could set the bots to be however difficult and spawn with whatever weapons and have however much health. So we would do this thing where it would be us and one other bot and we would make one of the bots an enemy on his own and just give him all the best AI in the world and just see if we could take down the juggernaut sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. Shit like that. But then there was also a story mode to this. You had to sneak up and do James Bond shit. Do you remember uh, Red Faction Gorillas? No. Red Faction Gorilla. Uh, this, this cover art looks familiar. The game does It takes doesn't. place on Mars. I think it was Mars. And, like, the cool thing about this game is I think it was on the PS3, but, like, the whole overworld was basically all destructible. So, like, we would get, like, a rocket launcher and just tunnel our way to the next area instead of going, like, the actual route. we just, like, blow the wall up until we got there. Bruh. Like, this was the first game that I played with, like, destructible environment. You know what game did that for me? Was Mercenaries... I can't spell. Mercenaries to uh, play... Wait, what is it? Maybe not Mercenaries 2. Playground of Destruction. Here we go. Mercenaries, I want to say it's Mercenaries 2, but this game, Mercenaries Playground of Destruction. This game was on the PS2. It was fantastic. Do you remember this game? I don't. So it's a third person shooter. You play as a hitman, a mercenary, and you have the entirety of like North and South Korea to fight between. And basically you'd just be taking on Um, You had a deck of 52 cards and each one of the cards was like a military head and there was a bounty for who you could kill and you would just work your way all the way up to, you know, fucking Kim Jong, whoever at the time and every building was destructible. Every fence was destructible. You called in airstrikes to replenish you with like explosives and rocket launchers and, you know, you would have threat levels like in Grand Theft Auto where like they would be more or less aggressive towards you and what you were doing. I remember this being yeah. crazy on the PS2, dude. I was like, holy fuck, how can they fit so much into a game as I wrapped around the same two areas for 90 <laughs> hours? What was your first rated M game? Have we talked about this? I don't know if we have. My first rated M game? Do I remember like owning or playing at a friend's house? Doesn't matter either whichever was more notable to you was halo rated m no no way then probably san andreas okay probably san andreas yeah i remember my uncle just like came over one day and handed me ghost recon Ooh. and was like here have this thomas clancy and like dude the menus were too confusing i couldn't figure out how to play the game (laughs) Really? You you have zero hours in Ghost Recon to this day? Zero, zero hours in Ghost Recon. <laughs> and then they made Ghost Recon 2. And for some reason I wanted it because I had Ghost Recon 1, even though I played none of it. Right. And I had my cousin take me, and he gets there and says, this game's rated T. And this was the only sequel to a game I can ever think of where the, the game was rated M and the sequel was rated T. Right. And he's like, I can't buy this for you. It's for you. You're not old enough. Because I was like eight. <laughs> I was like, oh. But like my mom gave him like 60 bucks to give me a game. So I could like pick out anything else. Right. So do you remember the movie Over the Hedge? Yeah. You got the Over the Hedge game? I got the Over the Hedge game for the PlayStation 2. Was it good? And pl- played all of it. Can't remember a single bit of the game. Ah, uh, that was... I, here's the thing that infuriates me, right? Is I had games that people would know life and I could have no lifed it, right? I had Kingdom Hearts 2, right? And to this day, some of the biggest JRPG YouTubers, some of the people that play the fuck out of Persona and Shin Megami Tensei and Final Fantasy you know, very much credit Kingdom Heart 2 or one of the early Final Fantasy games as being the thing that got them into that genre. And I kind of wish 
I got into it more, fell in love with the story, bought Final Fantasy games. I could be a Final Fantasy nerd if I had done that. I'd like know the story and appreciate the games and the remakes and stuff. And I don't know why I didn't. I played through it. I, I feel beat the it. Same way with like Mario, th- uh, Super Mario Bros. Two, because like as a kid, I literally was like a savant at that game. If I had just stayed with it, like no doubt in my mind, I could have competed in that game. Competed? But you like, mean speed run? Yeah, like speed run competitively, like where it was like you know good times. You could still now, do that. But now I go back to playing Mario games, and like I'm like, like a paraplegic trying to hit the <laughs> controller. Like all the timings are gone. It's funny that being in a wheelchair hinders your ability to play a video game. Sorry, a quadriplegic. It's funny how being in a quadcopter. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> uh, you know what I miss more though? More when than every when every movie got a video game. I don't miss that at all. What the fuck are you talking about? Because they were all bad. To this day, the the only good movie game it's not even a movie game, the only good first party fucking video game to come from a source was Star Wars Battlefront 2. Battlefront 2 was fantastic. SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom, fantastic. But you know that I like the other one. No, you don't. Nobody liked like the other one. I like the other one better. You just haven't played this one. That's I all have. it is. No, you haven't. I I like the other I don't remember the, I don't even remember the name of the other one, but it's I remember SpongeBob playing it. the movie game. But like there's this like uh, you have to like unlock abilities to play certain levels, if I remember correctly, and there's this one bowling move, but you had to get like 70 Krabby Patties or whatever they were to unlock the move and i never did it never once so i'd always play the game and then stop there they so have never finished it one of the youtube channels that like looks into the the deleted files or the unused files in video games you know what youtube channels i'm talking about right like boundary Kinda, break yeah. and channels like that they found some um it's like the company that did spongebob battle for bikini bottom also did like the scooby-doo movie video game so when looking through the game files for SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom, they find like assets for like Shaggy, <laughs> like, <laughs> amongst like the Krusty Krab and stuff. The rapper? What? Nothing. The pothead. <laughs> yeah, that one. It wasn't me. Um, I don't know. I just think that's the funniest thing in the world. Like, I guess it's obvious. But I don't know, like, that's how lazy games were back in the day. Like, they would literally just throw skins over the same game mechanics and world maps that they've already made. Because it's like, who gives a fuck? You go and collect some stuff, you unlock some things, you move on with the story, we get some voice actors, we all make some money, huh? And that's, like, what video games were back in the day. I can't condone that. You just maybe remember that when I was a kid, there was this Scooby-Doo game for, like, that, that cyber villain that, like... And there was like a side-scrolling PC game for it. And I played the entire game not knowing that there was a double jump. Holy so I played, fuck. I played the whole game only using single jump. And I got to the end and there was a jump I could not make. And I couldn't figure out how it worked. And I just spammed the jump button and realized there's a double jump. And realized I played the game on hard for no reason. Bruh. I did something similar. And I don't want to spend too much time trying to remember what it is. But I did something... No, it was Skyrim. I didn't know you could sprint in Skyrim. Wait, you just walked everywhere? Like I didn't distances? because the sprint button isn't shift. Oh, well, by default, it's something then. else. So when I press shift and I didn't go any faster, I was like, "Oh, this game doesn't have sprinting." So I would always just be jumping, <laughs> jump walking, taking carriages, and then I and I never leveled up my stamina because I was playing like a fucking mage or something. So I didn't even need stamina for my melee attacks or whatever. So my stamina was dog shit. And I don't remember what it was. I think I watched a speed run and this dude's putting all his stats into stamina. Cause he's like, obviously we're not planning on taking any hits. So we don't care about the health, but we need to be able to run. And I was like, you can run. And this dude's booking it. And I was like, I feel (laughs) fucking stupid, dude. This game, I have probably at least 10 more hours in Skyrim than I ever should have. Just cause I was walking to shit, dude. No, dude, you're in a calf workout, okay? It was a calf workout. If only it was in real life. That was my final exam in freshman year of high school, PE. They had a final exam, and it was you had to walk, like, 
eight miles. What? Yeah. They can do had, that? Yeah. They can make you walk eight miles we, in high we school? Went out, we went out to the track and we walked eight miles. You could not run any portion of it. You had to walk eight miles. Why could you not run? Why would they care about that? Because it's a calf exercise. Bro. Oh, that's stupid. You know what's really stupid? High school sports. They take that shit way too seriously for the 400 bucks the coaches get paid to teach it. It's so infuriating. They do it for the love of the game. No, they don't. They Shout absolutely do not. Not at my dog shit high school. They do not. I hated playing fucking football in high school, dude. The, oh, I didn't play football. When I think I, back, I'm I not saying it's any more. harder. I'm saying any sport. I played lacrosse. I played a tiny bit of field hockey, and it was like it, equally. It, think about this, right? Think about this. Think about this shit. Alex, think about this shit, right? Yeah, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. On top of you having to go to school for the 96 hours a day that you have to, right? You get like a 20-minute break where everybody's just hanging out in the lobby of the school. Everybody's waiting for school buses on their way home. You're, did you ever bump into friends and be like, hey, man, you want to go to the local mall? We getting food? Like, whose house are we going to? You guys want to play Halo? What are we doing? Right? Like, that was the thing that people did. Not fucking me. Not the first two years that I was in high school. My ass was fucking going right down to the gym, changing into my fucking cleats for four more hours of football practice. I was no, my done with the same thing. Dude. Done with school activities at like seven fucking thirty, dude. Walking the three four miles to get no, the four five miles to get home. Like I'm getting home at eight p.m. For what? For what, I mean, bro? And I then mean, like I my Fridays like, yeah. would be even worse because we'd play a fucking football match. So I mean we're finishing at eleven thirty before going on with my weekend where we also have fucking conditioning because like, if you want to take if you want to be a fucking starter cement you got to come in for weekend conditioning the stupidest fucking thing i don't know why sports are a thing dude such salt i mean like it wasn't fun dude like in football there's like two positions that are fun you're throwing the ball or you're catching the ball but if you're one of the dudes who's just hitting people and getting hit every single time and it's like oh no we messed up that rotation let's try it again and try and get our passes down it's not any different for me it's me and the one dude in front of me sometimes he gets knocked over sometimes i get knocked over this doesn't feel like fucking football you know what i mean yeah that was the annoying thing so i wish i played an individual sport Team sports? No, I, li- I like team sports better because I played soccer on a team that I captained, but it was like just a house team where I played with like the same guys for like eight years. Damn. Do they still play recreationally? Would you play with them if you got back into soccer? I have no idea where any of them are. Bruh. Actually, I went, I went, I was at my friend Ryan's wedding like two years ago, but he like, they, we've all spread out. Congrats, Ryan. Shout out, my boy. Anyway, if you, because I feel like I've lost a lot of perspective on this going full-time on YouTube thing over the course of just having the salt of having to actually do the work of becoming a YouTuber, right? I feel like I've lost a lot of the optimism that I had two years ago when I started, and I was like, when I'm a full-time YouTuber, I'm going to do this sort of shit, and it's going to be great. So I thought it might be interesting to ask you, Alex, if you were a full-time YouTuber. Tomorrow you have a video that blows up to 20 million views, and now all you got to do is do fucking whatever YouTube videos, and you know you can do that instead of whatever other day job. Um, you know, sort of what what do you th- what would you do? What 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 do you imagine a full-time YouTuber gets to do uh, that you would like to do? Sorry, can you clarify that question? I don't know what the like, fuck I'm asking. Like, I imagine that one of the greatest things about being a full-time YouTuber would be that, like, if you're, like, a vlogger, right, you can, like, just wake up early and, like, go and get a coffee. You know what I mean? Like, I can't do that right now. My life's boring. I can't, like, that'd be so mundane. Like, let me just record myself being anxious that I'm next in line. No, 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 no. You are already a YouTuber. Okay. By the way, for anybody at home, that feeling doesn't go away. I don't make videos and think, oh, yeah, I've got it in the bag, baby. I know how to make a good video. No. What the, even the videos that have hundreds of thousands of views on my channel, I look at and I go, what the fuck was I doing when I did that? None of them feel like they're going to do well, right? 
and yet they continue to resonate with my audience and I'll continue to thank you for it. But you know, I'm 300 fucking videos in and I still feel like every time I make a video, it's like, why, why would anybody watch this? But then they, they like do a term for that at my job where it's called the phonies. Well, it's called imposter syndrome, Alex. It's a psychological thing with a name and a studying behind it. Oh, sorry. Right. Is that, that's the same thing, right? Where you feel like you don't deserve to be in the position of authority that you are due to a lack of experience. You feel like, yeah, that's basically what we call, that's what we call the phonies. Yeah. Like they're going to find out one of these days. Yeah, exactly. I think imposter syndrome specifically refers to when you feel that regardless of how adequately equipped you are to do something. When yeah, imposter syndrome. Like, a lot of people among us feel that. Get it? Is, everyone, <sighs> boom. is that, is that the sound a slide, effect? I, can you do a slide whistle sound effect there? I, I can, yeah. <laughs> is that good? Thanks, man. Yeah, that was good. Okay, great. Uh, sorry, headphone users. I, Discord saved me, so I'll hear it in the video. <laughs> that's right. That's that's an audio only Easter egg for those of you at home and with ears. I'd like to congratulate Alex for getting this far in the podcast, even though he recorded it last night. Yeah. Exa- Wait, what? I listened to it, and then like I'm like, oh yeah, I said that. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, I still don't know what the fuck you're saying. What? So like, I'll rewatch the podcast oh, as if I right. didn't just say all these things, like eight hours ago yeah yeah yeah, like, yeah. whoa no i do the same thing like, I, like not even yeah like eight hours like i literally watch it the next day and you I'm know like, that meme of the kid eating ice cream next to the ice cream truck he's like what it's like listening to a podcast i need someone to like edit that where they put his wait, face on one of the kids in the ice cream <laughs> what it's like listening to podcast meme So it's that first one. Oh, but I'm also, but, that's fucking but I'm, hilarious. But, I'm also, but also put the kid on the left on any of the other faces because <laughs> that's also what I do. Oh, that's funny as shit, actually. I like that. That's that's a solid that's a solid meme. For those of yeah. you at home, I'll basically describe it. I'm not. Gonna it's a tier it. eight meme. It's a tier eight meme. You, 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 you guys aren't. Uh, you guys aren't. How it actually <laughs> feels listening to a podcast. <laughs> the dude is a chair. And other people are sitting in the chairs. Is this a meme? Why I stopped dating men and married a true crime podcast. That's interesting. I, I had a I had a really boring internship where I really got I, someone was like my my other intern friend was like begging me to get into those and I never did. Oh, are I they worth it. I very recently started listening to. Um, it's called Crime Junkie. I think they're either the most popular or the largest podcast on Spotify. Because they were the first result when I looked up true crime podcast. And yeah, so it's basically like they tell a story. And they basically just read the newspaper articles and the story behind true crime. And because they've done all the research, they'll give you all the details of what happened, how the police discovered what went down who initially looks suspicious, who's initially arrested, who actually did the murder, and they provide it in this sort of, you know, they know what happened, so they're going to curate it in a way that's really interesting for you to sort of discover it along with them. So it's kind of like them telling, it's kind of like how I told the synopsis of Old Boy, where it's like, oh, it's an interesting story, and if I knew what I was doing, I could probably tell it to you in a better way, but it's like the extra layer of, you know, it having a setting, a place, a time, these are real things that happened, there's two co-hosts. They're both girls, Brittany and I forgot the name of the other one. And, you know, one of them's telling the story and the other one's sort of asking questions that the audience might have. She's sort of like the audience insert. And then she's answering like, oh, no, yeah, the police did think initially that the dad might be a suspect, but it turns out that he's got an alibi. So instead, they start looking to see if they could find more details at the court and, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you have a lot of time to kill, like, I can't even listen to music anymore. I mean, seven hours of I got to have something entertaining happening because my hands are just autopiloting, you know, building computers and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You listen to three, four episodes of true crime. They keep your interest for long enough. You skip over a couple sponsored plugs. Suddenly it's lunchtime. You know, like they're, they're a great time passer, dude. I think, uh, I think you got to be into them though. I mean, if you don't like true crime podcasts, you should listen. Do you you watch any like detective shows or have you ever? 
I like sort of watch my dad watch Matlock. That counts. We'll count that. Okay. My, me, me and my family were recently been rewatching NCIS. Ooh, because, wait! Like, I watch SVU. I've seen all of SVU. It's still going. Yeah, I'm still watching it. Okay, okay. That's my a tougher one to do at work, but yeah. It's. I don't know, man. It's just I don't like it as much. What? Is it I not as know. well written, or does the no, no? The writing's fine. It's just it's just boring. Oh. It's like I don't know. It feels like manufactured shock value based off current events. That's definitely true and i don't know if i like it or if i appreciate the writing of it and i just haven't seen enough crime stuff to like i, I know, like be NCIS. like oh this is way worse than ncis i like ncis not because it's good writing but because it's like hilariously like outlandish half the time where it's like not enough where you don't believe it's happening in the show but like you know it's a little goofy it's a little it's a what? little out so there. are you saying the writing's bad or it's good but they really go there or it's so it's bad it's mediocre it's mediocre and they accept that oh okay and they're fine with that and it's just like but the characters are good and they they do this thing where they basically base the episodes off movies but in but they have one character who's a really big movie guy so instead of just them like ripping off movies they just say have a character say like hey this is like this movie and oh. and basically it's just them accepting that they ripped off a movie there's a word for that i uh you know what i remember exactly what it's from i'm watching pop culture detective on youtube and he's doing a video titled adorkable misogyny and he's breaking down um no, it wasn't that. He's breaking down the Big Bang Theory and the tropes that they fall into with one of the most popular TV shows ever. One of them was a dorkable misogyny, and it was the fact that they can get away with a lot of misogynistic stuff just because they're portrayed as these super nerdy guys. So the audience doesn't sort of feel scummy that they're doing stuff like spying on women in the shower and you know behaving super misogynistically because they're endearing and nerdy and goofy and what have you. And it's like a whole like trope. Like Revenge of the, the Nerds, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it, and he explores Revenge of the Nerds and a bunch of other stuff where it's like they literally straight up, you know, sexually harass. Do and, bad things. Yeah, statutory rape and all this, but they're nerds, so it's whatever. But one of the things They're the was, underdog. One of the things he was talking about was exactly that, where it's like they'll do a trope, but they'll play it off by having one of the characters acknowledge that they're doing the trope. Where it's like, they'll be like, this is the plan. We're going to sneak in. We're going to take pictures of them ch in the changing room. And then we're out of there. And one of the characters will be like, yo, guys, isn't this kind of scummy? And then they'll, they won't even have like a solution to it. It's just, all right, we acknowledged it. Let's go <laughs> forward with it. We've, we've already got, oh, you thought you were going to call us misogynistic? Nope. We're going to point out that it kind of is misogynistic and then do it anyway. Which has just led me to believe that I would probably actually be very good at writing TV scripts. Because if that's how low the bar is, I feel like I could strive for that. I, I, the bar is both low. I don't know. I feel like you just need to get an audience early on and then they just follow you like a cult. When it comes to shows, media, like in I'm saying, like, I'm thinking, like... Uh, Rush like, Hour 9? Question mark? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. No, Yes. But I'm thinking, like, major network, like, shows where, like, they're not, like, the best shows you're ever going to watch, but you still tune in weekly. Like, I'm thinking, like, NCIS, House. Oh, sure, yeah. House was great. House was great all the way through. I yeah, think I, I wish House was made today because that would be a great meme subreddit, but it was too early. Yeah. We had a... I keep forgetting that you and me didn't go to high school together because that... We're, we're at a, one stage further in life than the stage that we met in. So I was like, oh, yeah, I've known Alex since high school. And it's like, no, no, you didn't. You met him at, like, college age. You've just moved past that now. I yeah. went to high school with um, – we had a British, like, assistant principal whose last name was also Laurie. And I was like, are you Ooh. related to Hugh Laurie? And he was like, yeah, he's like my brother. And, and you believed him. It was always a joke, but it turns out he is actually Hugh Laurie's brother. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Which, I don't oh. know, I don't know when, I, I, I remember talking to somebody about it in high school and they looked at me like I was fucking stupid. They were like, yeah, what? He's got the British accent and everything. Yeah, that's his brother. I was like, huh, that's interesting. 
So that's a thing that happened. That's kind of crazy. Sort of. Isn't he? So like, uh, someone's gonna correct me in the comments. Maybe I'm wrong, but I thought like in in like England they know Hugh Laurie is like like he does like comedy stuff. Like he was a sketch comedy show. No, he's not like a super well respected actor. Uh, th- that seems to be the case for a lot of people who act out of their country. Like Jackie Chan is not a very well respected actor in China. They're like happy. Well, no, he had his movies were like from Hong. He made movies in Hong Kong where where his studio was. What does that mean? I don't I don't understand what you're trying to say with that. It's not like it's not a Chinese audience that's going for. It's like Hong Kong, well, which no, is like a he different... does huge work in China. He's in like yeah, I know he, he does. He's done songs and he's done he, but he's not super well respected in China. Like Chinese people do respect him for bringing so much light to Chinese media and the work that he's done. But like the fact that he's like completely distanced himself from like his son and stuff, and like uh, is is like super frowned down upon, and he's got like you know, a lot of work that isn't super interesting, that isn't, like, his American Hollywood blockbusters. He's also got, like, really shitty music videos and, like, bad Chinese voice acting dubs of cartoon characters and stuff that he's also done. Yeah. But then, yeah, Hugh Laurie... Probably didn't help. Yeah, Hugh Laurie's not... You know, he's respected as, like, a really great actor for House here in the States, and obviously, like, all Americans are impressed by a British person able to do an American accent, right? But he's yeah. been on, like, legit sketch comedy. Like, he's been on fucking um, that Michelin Web look with Michelin Web. He's been in some of their sketches. And I was like, wait, is that fucking Hugh Laurie? And it's like, oh, yeah, this show's from 15 years ago. Of course. Him and Stephen St- Stephen Fry were, sketch- were a comedy duo. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm thinking of. That's hilarious. Well, I mean, and, well, it's something. Has he done anything beyond House? Is he also a good... Respected actor for anything other than House? He's doing a new show right now, I think. Is it called Apartment? Um, well, that's as good as this podcast is going to get. You got anything else to say, Alex? Uh, new episodes every week. New episodes every week. Same time, same place. Remember to subscribe. Also available on Spotify. Don't forget about that. If, if you've listened to this point, you can also listen on Spotify. That's a thing you can do. Oh, I, fuck, I was supposed to do this at the beginning. Big thank you to the patrons. Um, if you're subscribed on Patreon, nothing special happens, but I do appreciate you guys. You help make podcast happen. And I thank you. Anyway, this is... Uh, we'll catch you guys next week. Peace. Spruce. <laughs>